Watch the Emmy Award winning Action News here on Channel 13. This is the enthusiasm, and these are the celebrations, the faces, the mascots, and the uniforms that each fall define college football. But today, the focus and emotion of college football is centered in Huntington, West Virginia for a national championship showdown repeat, matching Marshall University and defending champions Youngstown State. A year ago, Michael Payton and Marshall were poised for the jump to number one. The Penguins were 11 points down after three quarters, but a furious fourth quarter rally lifted Youngstown State to stardom. And Marshall has been smarting ever since. Today, the rematch. Youngstown State is pointing for number one again. State against Marshall. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Nance, and welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the national championship game for Division One AA. What a great scene we have for you today. Not only is it sold out, 5,000 standing room tickets have been sold for this game as these two schools geographically so close together, separated by only 350 miles. Here's the journey for Youngstown just across the state line to Huntington, which is also bordering the state of Kentucky. Youngstown State and Marshall. And my pleasure to be paired today with John Robinson, who just 15 years ago won the national championship for Southern Cal and went on to be a great coach with the Los Angeles Rams. John, how did these two teams make it back to the finals this year? Well, Jim, 90 teams started the season in September. Two are left. The playoff is established with 16 teams. Six teams qualify as conference champions, and 10 are at large. Three playoff rounds so far, one more to go. Well, the defending champions, the Penguins of Youngstown State, what a ground attack they have. Well, their way to win is on the ground, giving the ball to their two tailbacks. Both have rushed for 1,000 yards, Tamron Smith and Darnell Clark. How about defensively and Dave Roberts? Well, I think he's one of the best players in the division, and he's going to have a chance to play in the NFL. He tackles well. He defends the pass well. He's a great punt returner also. Defending the pass today will be quite a chore for Dave Roberts in Youngstown because they go against the player that was the outstanding player in Division I AA football, quarterback Michael Payton of Marshall. Michael is an outstanding passer, the most valuable player in this division. He, they throw the ball a lot. That's their way to win. He throws the ball to Troy Brown, who's just been a great player this year in every way, running the ball back, uh, catching the ball, and also to Mike Bartram, their tight end. It should be close. It should be explosive. We know the crowd will be electric. What a scene we have. And down on the sidelines, the third man of our announcing crew is Jim Gray, a repeat performer from last year's championship. Let's bring him on now. Here's Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Jim. Marshall's going to be without their kicker today, David Merrick. He was suspended this morning by head coach Jim Donham because he violated team rules. What it is, Merrick missed practice on Thursday. Now, I spoke to Coach Donham, and he told me that this decision is definitely going to hurt his team. However, there's a principal involved, and no individual is bigger than the team. Now, there's a twist of irony in this story because Merrick has attempted every field goal so far this year for Marshall. He's going to be replaced on the roster by his older brother, Willie Merrick. Now, if there's a bright spot in that, Merrick has never attempted a field goal, but he was the soccer team's leading scorer. Jim? Boy, what a game to come on and kick for the first time. Never attempting a field goal in his career, but here he is in the championship game. We'll watch Willie Merrick today. Marshall, by the way, won the toss and will receive as the Penguins are about to come out. 11-2 and 1 this year, but in the playoffs, victories against Villanova just as a year ago in the playoffs in the opening round, and then at the Citadel and at Northern Iowa last week. Attempting to join Georgia Southern as the only repeat champion. Here comes Youngstown State. for the ovation. Michael Payton will lead the way for Marshall. There's Coach Jim Donnan on the left. 
victories in the playoffs over Eastern Kentucky, Middle Tennessee State, and last week, Delaware. They call it the thundering herd. Just listen. It's a rallying point for the entire town of Huntington to have this championship game, to have their team in it. Youngstown State and Marshall, the rematch coming up next. CBS Sports presents the 1992 NCAA Division I AA Football Championship. Today's game is sponsored by Coca-Cola Classic. You can't beat the real thing. And by Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. It's the first time ever that two teams in the final meet the following year. Youngstown State, again 11-2-1 on the year. Marshall 11-3, playing for the national championship. 51 degrees, partly cloudy. The winds at a breeze of 10 to 15. And Youngstown State with kicker Jeff Wilkins. About to boot to Troy Brown. And boy, what a threat he is, Coach. Yeah, we're really excited about seeing him. Everybody here talks the, uh, like he's the uh, something very special. And uh, he's going to handle the ball a lot today. Kickoff returns, punts. Mr. Everything, they call him. I don't know if this kick will make it to him. Yes, it will. Here's Brown from the seven to start the championship. Brown twisting to the 25. Brian Coleman on the tackle. Michael Payton, the player of the year in Division I double A. Last year he said he was too hyped for this game. Had a hideous first half is how he described it. He wants to atone for that today. Here's his offensive line. Johnny McKee, you might see in short yardage situation in the backfield. Thomas Woods, Ratliff, Deaton, and Bartram, a very good tight end. Orlando Hatchett and Pedro are the running backs. Troy Brown and Will Brown are the targets for this man, Michael Payton. Play action fake, and Payton will scramble with it. A hard-earned four yards bumped out by Malcolm Everett. Demario Ridgeway was in on the quarterback, applying pressure. Here's the leader of that Youngstown State defense, Dave Roberts, the All-America. On the line, Ridgeway, who was in on the quarterback on that first play. David Quick, Chris Vecchione. Coleman made the tackle on the kickoff. Jeff Powers is their top sack man. Lee and Evans are the other linebackers in the secondary. Smith and Brown, Everett and Roberts. Second down and six. Peyton rifling long and overthrowing. Overthrowing Bartram is tight end. Everett had the coverage. One of the things, Jim, that uh, I think Youngstown State is going to do is make uh, Mike Payton be uh, patient today. Jim Trussell talked to us before the game and said, we've got to make this guy throw the ball short to beat us. Uh, that time, Mike Payton looked a little bit impatient, trying to get the big play down to the middle to his big tight end. Jim Trussell on one side. This is Jim Donnan, the Marshall coach, former assistant at Oklahoma, where he was the offensive coordinator for five years. Third and six for the Thundering Herd. Peyton to Brown. That's good enough. Good enough for the first down. So Troy Brown, Mr. Everything, the most exciting player, people say, a rather routine pass play to pick up the first. Here's Brown was coming in motion. They're trying to get him singled, and they do. Out pattern, makes the catch. Steps out of bounds. He had the first down by a good inch there, I think. But that's the a nice start uh, for a, as a quarterback. You just want to make sure you complete that first pass. Start to get a little bit of rhythm. Uh, he's handled the ball all three times and he's got a first down, so that's good for them. So with the new set of downs from the 36, Orlando Hatchet slashing up to the 45 for a gain of about eight. That's his first carry for a couple of weeks now. He, he got a concussion a, 
a couple of weeks ago and has been out and so now that they're starting to establish the things that they want to do in the football game I think we're going to see a wide open offensive uh, show from this football team if they can mix the run in with the pass then they're doing the things the way they want to hatchet goes out Kurt another cut an extra tight end is in he's shifting to the right side on second and two we'll run it that way Pedro. Glenn Pedro with the first down near the 50 got a lead block from all America right guard Phil Ratliff and there was a big hole there he we're going to see the end zone shot of it watch watch the hole develop in the front Ratliff does a great job he's got his man he's keeping him and then the ball goes right up the middle uh, if they can uh, get that kind of blocking from Ratliff they've got something going down the middle terrific block by number 56. A repeat All-America, Phil Ratliff leading away for that man, Glenn Pedro. First and ten. Pedro's the single back. Pedro. Down to the 35 to Will Brown. A gain of 15. One of the thing that that the Marshall coaches were concerned about was Peyton's accuracy throwing the, the straight pass or the pass against zone. Here we see some, a really accurate throw, and I'm sure they're pleased about that. The passer that sometimes gets inaccurate when he has to throw that medium or short range passer uh, pass. If he gets off to a good start, then uh, a lot of those fears kind of fade into the into the sunset. And he's uh, he's doing that now. Bill Brown from the same hometown as Michael Peyton, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. First down and back to Brown, back to Will Brown some nice cutting to get near another first maybe a yard shy Reggie Lee finally took his legs away Marshall averaging coach over 40 points per game yeah and, and there aren't, aren't many football teams in America that average that much and the way they're uh, starting this game they certainly intend to try to get that kind of a production today it's a penalty a 10 yard penalty uh, holding offense 10 yard penalty Still first down. It's a Southern Conference officiating crew. And they tagged the penalty on Marshall, backing them to the 45. I might point out that this game was scheduled all along to be played here at Marshall University Stadium. It's awarded way in advance. In fact, the championship game next year will be here as well. Ending a run that Georgia Southern had hosting the title game for years. Here's Running play to Pedro. And hit by Jeff Powers for a loss on the play. They tried to go outside that time and just couldn't block Powers. He got the ball going sideways. Anytime you can get a runner going sideways, you uh, you get a chance to, to stop him. Pedro goes down and then what and, and Powers comes back outside. An excellent job by him. He carried the tight end down, then came back, kept the runner going sideways. Second down and 22. There's the junior from Austintown, Ohio. Power made the play. And now Marshall on second and long, connecting to Troy Brown this time. Still short of the first. That's a 15 yard pickup. Well, we can see that we can see that Peyton uh, loves Brown. Here we're going here we're going to see Brown coming off the ball, pushing up the field. Now breaks to the outside, and that ball is thrown right now. It's a great timing pattern, and uh, Brown is wide open. You can see the respect that Youngstown has for him. They're backed off of him and giving room in that middle area. Troy Brown goes to the left on third and seven. Ricky Carter is in as an extra receiver. Eight to Bartram. That ball looked like it was deflected at the line. It still got to the tight end for a first down. I've been really impressed with this young man. He's got a, I think he has a real future in this game. He's about 6'4. Here we get in a look at Mike Payton looking for him all the way. He's got his eyes on him and he's going to find him. The ball looked like it got tipped a little bit, Jim. And They're really oh, they it incomplete. Incomplete. Oh. Again, you know, that's one of those double catches that uh, it's too bad. Demario Ridgeway did get a hand on it on the line, the defensive lineman for 
Youngstown State on fourth and seven. They're going for it. Fourth down play. Won't get the pass away. A sack. Well, we could see the effect of the suspension of the field goal kicker right off the bat. Third down or fourth down around the 30 uh, may have been a good field goal uh, chance, but they fell with a new kicker. They just couldn't go from there. They went for it and didn't get it. That was a sack by David Birch. And Youngstown State will take over. Here comes quarterback Nick Cochran. A senior started his career at Ohio State. Ended up transferring, set behind the last two years, quarterback Ray Isaac. Now he's the starter and has done an outstanding job with Miller, Cortez, Samarone on the line. From the shotgun, quarterback draw. And Cochran lost the football at the tail end of it, but they rule him down at the 42. Gain of about three. William King hit him. Did that formation surprise you, John? <laughs> That's what you do in a championship game. Say, well, we're going to fool these guys. We're going to let the quarterback run the first play. Then the tailback gets it the next 47 times in a row. <laughs> well, what a pair of tailbacks they have with Darnell Clark. He rushed for over 1,000. And Tamron Smith rushed for over 1,300 yards this year. Clark is in the game now. The fullback is Ryan Wood on second and seven. Clark stuff maybe a loss William King makes the play for the second down in a row William King is kind of a nickel linebacker that plays all the time he always plays plays on the weak side that time we saw him blitzing and blitz right into the plays a little guy but boy do they think he's an outstanding player it'll be third and eight for Youngstown with Clark and Smith in the backfield at the same time. Great time, Cochran unloads to Clark, and he is stopped short. Stopped short by Charles McGregor. Only one man out there defending, and McGregor made the tackle to force the Penguins to punt. Jeff Wilkins, who punted 22 times this year, will punt instead of Larry Bucciarelli. And that's a beauty. Roger Johnson watches it bounce at the goal line and into the end zone, a touchback. Almost down at the one. Dave Roberts was trying to chase it at the goal line. But when we come back, Marshall will have it for the second time, starting at its own 20-yard line. Jim Nance, John Robinson, and Jim Gray back with you in Huntington, West Virginia. We are Marshall, is what they're saying, the thoughts the way. And Michael Payton and Marshall have it first and 10 from their own 20. Scoreless in the first quarter. Quickly to Brown, and he is hammered. He is hammered by Andre Mason right after the catch. They say Mason is maybe their best cover guy. Pretty outstanding that time, John. Well, this is one of the things cornerbacks there. They blitzed. They saw the blitz. They got the ball off fast. And there's nobody out there to help them. When you're playing man coverage, you've got to come up and make those kind of tackles. They talk about corners having to cover. But, boy, they sure got a tackle, too. He did a really nice job there. They give him five yards on the play. Second down and five. Hatchet is the lone back. Peyton gets away. And has the first down. Picked up about six. Leon Jones grabbed him by the ankles. Jim, we can begin to see why Peyton is the uh, MVP of this division of football. He's thrown the ball in a sharp manner. And to watch him just use his athletic ability. Here comes a blitz again. He doesn't have what he wants. Now he starts to scramble. And look at the power. He runs right through a tackler. Now he's off. Now he's got the first down. That's a nice job. He's handled the ball just about every time, and I, I'm sure he feels confident about his performance so far. First and ten. Glenn Payton. 
Pedro. Hit by Jones again. Leon Jones with the tackle, but about six yards on that run. This is a defense that held Northern Iowa last week to only seven points. Northern Iowa had been averaging 31. And they've come on in late in the year. Uh, you know, they had, they struggled early and have improved from about week eight on now. And uh, I think they feel pretty confident about their group. And they seem uh, willing to come after uh, the Marshall quarterback. Second down and four. Hatchet. First down to the 47. Orlando Hatchet. A senior from Canton, Ohio. Here we get a look at, at the draw play. It's a draw lead. Hatchet just waits, gets the ball, lets the blocking develop, gets up the field. I'm impressed with this offense and the quickness that it seems to have. They seem to have a purpose about them. They seem to be very quick in their execution. They've been impressive so far to me. Uh, they seem to know exactly what they want to do. Here we see them with the fullback, uh, 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 Mike Bartram. Bartram comes out in motion, tries to throw a block for Pedro. He'll take it outside instead, and no gain on first down. Pedro, Pedro had four 100-yard rushing efforts this year, stuffed that time by Jeff Powers. Again, they got him uh, going sideways, and then with this kind of an offense, the toughest thing running-wise is to get the ball outside. You don't have a good lead block uh, type of circumstance, so that if you get the tailback, any kind of runner going sideways, you usually get him for a, a small gain or a loss. You surprised at all what Marshall's doing offensively so far? No, not really. I think they're getting the ball to Brown. Uh, they are mixing it up. They want to run the football, and of course, they want the quarterback to have it a lot. Second and 10. Run it again with Pedro. Ooh, what a stick at the 50 yard line by Alfred Hill the third. Alfred Hill. Alfred Hill had a big sack in the fourth quarter last year in the championship game and that big rally. With draw plays if the linebackers don't drop too much they have a great shot to get up and make that kind of hit on a linebacker. The problem is that when you when you don't drop then those receivers are able to operate in behind you. So they're trying to put by running a lot of draws put those linebackers that have to zone drop in, into a, a dilemma. Third and seven. Marshall has driven into Youngstown territory once. Looking for it again and incomplete intended for Bartram. Well, that was one of those plays, Jim, where they tried to run a bootleg, and all Marshall did is drop seven or eight guys back off and just stood there and played zone, and it's hard to find a guy when you're running laterally like that against the zone pass defense if you don't make a good play action fake in the bootleg. Uh, he just didn't have anybody, and uh, they have to punt. Here's punter Travis Colquitt. That name may sound familiar. That's because he's the nephew of Craig Colquitt, former punter of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And his dad played for the Cowboys back in 1970. Into the breeze, not a very deep punt, but fair catch made by Roberts at the 21. 30-yard punt, no return. And 5-13 remaining in the first quarter with no score. Youngstown State and Marshall. Welcome back to Huntington where there is no score in the first quarter. Now there's a guy who would really like to be here today, but he's kind of busy. That's Eddie DeBartolo Jr. of the San Francisco 49ers. In fact, his team's gonna play later on here on CBS against Tampa Bay. Well, he's from Youngstown, Ohio, and he sent to the team a telegram with his best wishes. So Eddie's got two teams playing today. Jim? He does indeed as the Penguins complete the pass to Ryan Wood, doubled up by William King and Charles McGregor. Yeah, it's a double header day for DeBartolo. We have the 49ers in Tampa Bay. It's nice the way Jim Gray sets us up for the promo. Promo, that's but right. Coming up after this game, we'll have the Bucks and the 49ers. Well, anybody from Youngstown's got their eye glued to this uh, television today if they're not here, and I'm sure Eddie's the same. Second down and seven, and Clark is the tailback. They're lined up in the eye, and they run the option. Cochran keeps. Nice effort for a first down. This is a tough kid, this quarterback, Nick Cochran. In fact, when we met him for the first time yesterday, Coach, 
you you didn't think he was the quarterback. Well, he, he looks like a linebacker and he <laughs> acts like a linebacker and I think would like to be a linebacker. He's done a great job of leading this team this year. You said you don't look like a quarterback. He said uh, it's because I'm not a lover. I'm a fighter. Yeah. Look at that face. Now that's a that's a linebacker and it? that's not a quarterback. But he does play quarterback very well as we just saw he rolled out and ran for a first down. Their first first down of the game. Cameron Smith for about three is all hit by a whole wave of Marshall defenders. Well that's what young Youngstown is going to have to do now they're going to have to control this game uh, with their inside runs. Tamron Smith is the inside runner. He's a physical stocky guy as we see he's coming off the field and uh, there goes Clark back in for him. Look look at those legs now uh, that's a that's a guy that's pretty hard to get your arms around that guy. And he's the power runner. He's in at fullback now. So now this is when we're liable to see him with the ball when he's playing fullback. Second down and seven. 3.28 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Clark. Ridden down about four yards short of the first, maybe three. Tackle by Shannon King. Here's that uh, pair of penguins you were talking about. Yep. And they have done a great job. There aren't a lot of people that have a thousand yard runner let alone two and uh, that's the way they've won and that's the way they've gotten here is getting that running game going. Uh, they've started out with uh, trying to mix it up some but I'm sure as the game goes on we'll see that hammer uh, out type of offense. It is third and two for the Penguins with two tight ends John Quintana and William Seach. Did not get it. Hit again by Shannon King. And the punting unit comes on. So only one first down in the first quarter for Youngstown State. Well, that's not the way they wanted to start the game, particularly not getting third and short. The power team has to win those kind of battles to keep the ball and to control the game. And a fake. Jeff Wilkins. First down into Marshall territory to the 43. If that was a fake, he didn't tell anybody else because everybody else was covering the punt. I think they just got a guy in there and he said, I got to run with this. <laughs> Let's see what, what it looks like here. I, I That's either the best fake or I, boy, I don't know. I think he felt the pressure coming uh, he in. Sure and he tucked it in. I think he would have gotten the punt away okay, but. Felt the heat of two on rushers and ran, ran with it for nine yards for a first down. So you got to give me the ball more times. Heck, I make nine yards every time you give me the ball. And he's talking to Bucciarelli, the first team punter. And <laughs> what are you doing? Everybody's wanting to know. Hey, what are you doing? Well, what he did is he picked up a first down. Yeah, like, get off my back, guys. I'm all right. But I'm sure uh, you know what happens as a punter you have to keep your eye and your mind on what you're doing and if you take a glance up and see those people then uh, then everything gets out of rhythm and that's look look like what's going to happen. He's getting advice from the veteran there. I think Bucciarelli will be back in there next time. <laughs> uh, Bucciarelli is a part time fireman and uh, he'll put out the fire on the punting team next time. There's a fine young coach Jim Tressel recently turned 40. And he won the championship a year ago looking to repeat. We're scoreless in the opening quarter. So the Penguins are in Marshall territory for the first time today after the nine yard gain by punter Jeff Wilkins. Gives him a new set of downs. This kid Cochran was a fine basketball player. Offered scholarships to Southern Cal, Illinois, Illinois State, and Bradley. Good athlete. Under center, he hands off to Tamron Smith and only about three yards. William King, he's been in on a lot of plays. So he really far. is. He's a very quick football player, uh, very short. I'm sure uh, he, his idol is uh, the linebacker Mills from uh, the New Orleans Saints, who's about the same height, about 5'9 or 5'10. But it's very quick and attacks the ball here. Made that stop for a short game. He has six tackles already. Second down and seven. 
Clark. A loss of two. Donahue Stevenson got to him first. He was a middle linebacker at Marshall for two years, and they moved him to the outside. Well, the going is a little tougher for Youngstown running the football. They really haven't established any kind of power run yet that has uh, uh, been sustaining for them. They've mixed their offense. Uh, they've come to some draws and tried to throw the football. Their best run was the quarterback, Cochran, on, a, on an option play. So we may, we may begin to see more of that. Third and nine, and Troy Brown, the great receiver, is in on defense. We've said he's Mr. Everything. He'll defend the pass. And the pass is hurried by William King as Cochran had to throw it away. King was in his face. Well, they were looking for the screen pass, and somebody went right out and covered the screen, man. And uh, Cochran had nothing else to do but to throw it out of bounds and uh, punt the ball and play defense. Well, Jeff Wilkins keeps his part-time job as punter, full-time place kicker. Jim, he's, I think he's going to punt it this time. <laughs> Oh, he's averaging nine yeah. yards a rush. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> His head was straight down all the time on that one. And again into the end zone. So they'll bring it out to the 20. 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. Coach Jim Donnan, North Carolina State graduate, quarterback. In fact, 25 years ago this week, he was the most valuable player in the Liberty Bowl. He led North Carolina State to a victory over Georgia down in Memphis, Tennessee. An assistant not only with the Wolfpack, but Florida State, North Carolina, Kansas State, Missouri, and Oklahoma for five years where he was the offensive coordinator until he took the head coaching job here two and a half years ago. And Pedro for a little room on what might be the final play of the first quarter. Jeff Powers with the tackle. This game is uh, starting out similar to last year's game where they did not put, they only put three points on the board uh, in the first half and then things broke open uh, as the game uh, moved on in the end of the third quarter. Peyton will uh, get some extra time uh, with the coach as they change ends and the first quarter complete Marshall twice penetrated Youngstown State Territory. The Penguins were once in the thundering herd into the field, but no points. Scoreless at the end of the first quarter, and we'll return to Huntington after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to the national championship game for Division I AA, a scoreless opening quarter as we about are about to embark on the second quarter. Let's go down to the Marshall locker room. Here's Jim Gray. Okay, Jim, we always talk about bulletin board material. Well, there's been one thing on the bulletin board here in the Marshall locker room all year long. It says, Penguins quiet the thunder. Well, since August the 2nd, when this team came back, that's last year's headline of the disappointment of last year's game. Well, Jim Donnan told his team before they went out on the field, take one last look at this headline because none of us want to relive that pain. Jim? It has been a painful reminder they can make up for it today. Marshall starting the second quarter from its 22-yard line. Second down and eight. Peyton's pass deflected and almost intercepted. Intended for Orlando Hatchet out of the backfield. Reggie Brown broke it up. So third and eight, and Michael Payton, who again described last year's championship game performance where he threw for 363 yards and two touchdowns. A hideous first half and too hyped early. What would you say so far, John? Oh, I think he's doing fine. Uh, again, they're forcing him to be patient, and uh, they haven't quite found that rhythm yet. With pressure, gets away from Ridgeway. And oh, what a catch. Troy Brown has it at the 50. Back to the middle to free himself. Troy Brown slides to the 40. Michael Payton has been very impressive scrambling. I, I didn't quite know that he had this kind of ability to scramble around and see the receiver down the field while he's scrambling. The key thing for a scrambling quarterback is to be able to, to avoid the guy coming at him, which he can do, but keep your eyes down the field. There he does. 
puts the ball right on the money to Troy Brown who almost gets out of bounds but it looked like he was going for the distance but looked like he put on a quarterback slide there. 38 yards and the catch was made with Dave Roberts coming over the back trying to bat it away but the football got there first. So first down Peyton sets up the screen Hatchet snares it and Hatchet's to the 34 yard line a six yard gain. Old man Hatch is what his teammates admiringly call him. 23 year old Orlando Hatchet. Fourth all time rusher at Marshall. At the luncheon you got quite a quite a rise out of that team when you, when you talked about his receding hairline boy. Uh, he'll hear about that for a while. I promised him I wouldn't mention it on the air and well, I didn't. I did. I, I didn't promise. Him. Second down and four. And Pedro good run for the first to the 26. Trevor Thomas threw a lead block. A little hurdle action for Pedro to pick up the first down. Look at the offensive line come off the football here. Pedro's a good inside runner. And again this kind of offense needs to have runners that come straight ahead. That was an excellent job by the offensive line. This kind of offense once they get a big play from the quarterback get a big play from their wide receiver Troy Brown something starts to happen. You can start to feel it now and I think everybody here starts to feel them come alive a little bit. First down from the 27. Will Brown. And he is twisted down at the 18 they'll mark it forward progress Randy Smith. Credit for the tackle. Jim aren't you impressed with how quick he is getting rid of that football. Yes very much so. Uh, he's, he's got a strong arm and in the short passes that ball's out of there fast. We were a little concerned that maybe watching him practice that he maybe had a too much of a wind up throwing the football but boy that's not the case here. He's sharp. At it. Thrown for 94 yards. We are just starting the second quarter. Second down and one. Pedro picks up the first. Well that's the kind of mixture they want their offensive line is coming off the football uh, really well a, a team that throws a lot tends to have an offensive line that becomes a little bit passive and it thinks of themselves as pass blockers but this group although good at pass blocking is doing a fine job of coming off the football and opening the inside run for them. John look at number 72 330 pound Johnny McKee if they get into a goal line situation they may put him into the backfield. He rushed for five touchdowns this year. A la Fridge. Peyton on the scramble. Hill after him. Throws into the end zone. Oh, what a knock away. Good defensive move by Marcus Evans. And that was on the money again. That was going to be a touchdown. He seems to be able to run and see the receiver which is a it is a tremendous quality for an athletic quarterback uh, and put the ball on the money on the run. I've been quite impressed with Mike so far. He was going for Mike Bartram. His, and he had him in the back of the end zone Jim I think yeah, his two time all Southern Conference tight end. Here's the ninth play of the drive for Marshall second down and ten. Down to the eight. We've talked about Bartram, uh, how impressed we were with him. He's a very accomplished wide uh, tight end, as a, a very accomplished receiver as a tight end. But uh, he did a nice job that time of blocking. He's a he's a big physical kid. We we'll see him come in motion. Watch him here, number 19, come off and and. Well we're going to have to talk to him be a little more impressive when, when we is that wasn't as good a block as I thought but he did attack the man went a little low that time third down third down and three Pedro I'm not so sure David Birch got him at the line. Interesting call now again the field goal. Uh, the decision to suspend their field goal kicker now is uh, forcing Jim to make a decision and I think he's going to go for it. 
They suspended their field goal kicker uh, for just for disciplinary reasons. They're going with his brother as a field goal kicker, but uh, they're not anywhere near as confident about him as we see here. Fourth and one, they're going for it. Less than a yard for the first. On the rollout, they throw for a Patriot touchdown, Marshall. Bartram's ninth touchdown of the year, and for Michael Payton, his 30th touchdown pass. Here's Willie Merrick, their new place kicker. He did convert two of two point afters this year, and he drills this one. 7 0 Marshall. It's a rollout pass now. They have, they have put Bartram in motion out in the flat. He's wide open. Everybody's thinking they're going to run for it. And he just walks into the end zone. Peyton says, hey, I'm going now. A touchdown on a fourth down play. 7-0 Marshall in the second quarter. Mike Bartram scores the game's first touchdown. This is a kid you think John could play at the next level. Oh, I don't think there's any question. He's big and he's physical and oh, he's got baby. great hands and he's got a really short haircut. So what else can <laughs> what work. else can you ask for for a guy going into pro football? That's worth at least an extra round in the draft <laughs> or an extra round closer to the top. Back to receive Dave Roberts and Malcolm Everett. Willie Merrick leading score on the soccer team at Marshall. And a good one. Four yards deep and Everett will just down it. We'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Oh and he got a flag on the tail end of that disagreement. Personal foul will go against the Penguins. They'll have to start at the at their own 10 yard line. It's amazing how how many penalties there are in the kicking game. I think it's something that you try to you try to make people believe that the the kicking game is. Uh, You've got to really hustle and be fanatical in it, but when you get people too fanatical, all of a sudden uh, these kind of things happen, and they really punish you from an offensive standpoint. That was after the uh, after the play, so now they're starting first and twenty. Tough way to start. As the coach Jim Donnan headed toward his son Todd Donnan, the backup quarterback for Marshall, but here's Nick Cochran facing first and twenty. Cameron Smith for only about four. You know, Coach, wherever you go, you have friends and surprise visitors, and you have one today. Former player for you with the Los Angeles Rams, a great one, Dennis Hara. Welcome. Good to have you. Coach, what about this guy right here? Well, when I started with the Rams as a rookie coach, Dennis kind of took care of me for a couple <laughs> years, kind of showed me around. One of the great offensive linemen in football and one of the best guys. In fact, Recruited to play here at Marshall, but went to Miami instead. You were recruited as a tailback, right, Dennis? Running back, and I gained 100 pounds, and they stuck me on the line. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Wood on the run, tackled by Jim Durning, so third and long coming up. Well, Dennis was always one of the best leaders. I, I don't know that I've ever been around a man who was more of a leader on the football field than Dennis was, and uh, been nominated on the final. Uh, a list this year in the Hall of Fame may very well uh, be in the Hall of Fame one of these days. We wish you well on that, Dennis. Thanks for stopping by. A third down for Youngstown. Third and 11 as Troy Brown again is in on defense. Here comes the reverse. 
Back to the quarterback, Cochran. He has an open man. It's William Seach. And flags are down. And Seach got near the first down yardage. Had to be a lineman downfield, I would think. Ray Miller was about 30 yards <laughs> downfield, and when he saw that ball thrown, he started to shrink and say, man, I got to find my way back. But they caught him. That was just chaos there. They were trying a, a reverse option. Uh, it didn't work at all. For those of you scoring, it's Cochran to Smith to Boykin. <laughs> third to second to third <laughs> right. to second. Here's the reverse. Now they're going to try to run an option here, pitch it back to Cochran. You see they got a blocker out there. But they also got half the Marshall team. Now Cochran's in deep trouble. He said, I got to come up with something. Now he throws the ball, but uh, they've got an ineligible receiver downfield, about 30 yards downfield. And uh, the most embarrassing thing possible for an offensive lineman. Poor William Seats. It's only the third time he's had the football in his hands this year, including the pregame warm ups. Receiver downfield, five yard penalty. Still third down. He's a backup tight end as William Seach in an Ohio State transfer. But well, actually it was Terrica Jones who had the football first from the quarterback and then gave it up to Boykin then back to Cochran. I thought that was some good improvising by the quarterback even though he had a lineman downfield. Well he was desperate. He had about 10 guys chasing him by his own goal line. And, uh, they're third down at 15 now and uh, they just don't have the kind of capabilities to really exist in this environment. They have to be aggressive running the football for them to get the kind of rhythm they need. It's called a third and 16. Cochran with pressure tried to get it away to Quintana his tight end but Jim Durning was in the quarterback's face. They were looking oh we got a penalty a, a late hit on the quarterback or, or some sort of a confrontation between the quarterback and somebody that was tackling. Oh another. Slap each one of them with personal foul penalties. Durning and Chris Samarone, I'm sure. Have two dead ball fouls, personal fouls, against the offense and the defense. All set. It's going to be fourth down. That is one of the most worthless penalties in all of football. The, you throw really flags is. and it really doesn't mean anything. It really, it really is. And, uh, So Wilkins punts into the wind. Fair catch called by Brown near the 50. 38 yard punt a pretty good one into the wind for Jeff Wilkins. Outstanding punt really and you know when the problems that he had just a few minutes ago uh, not being able to get a punt off and now come back with a crucial punt deep in their own territory. Good job. Seven nothing Marshall in good field position again near the 50 with a seven nothing lead. Well, to summarize, Michael Payton has thrown for 100 yards and a touchdown pass to Mike Bartram. Marshall has 100 yards more total offense. And Darnell Clark of Youngstown State, who just found out, has injured an ankle. It's 7 0 Marshall with 8.44 to go in the second quarter. We'll be getting an update from Jim Gray on that Clark injury. First and ten from the 48. Peyton fires it long to Brown, all oh, right through his hands. That's a sight you won't see very often. Well, I think uh, Brown expected the ball over his outside shoulder, and and Michael let him back inside. He's already tried to turn around and pick up the ball in mid-flight, but just before we caught into that, he was looking over the other shoulder, and that took his eye. Here, here's the throw. Again, you can see the, the trajectory, and, and this man has done an outstanding job of throwing the football. I'm not sure that's where he wanted that one to go, and I'm not sure Troy expected to have that tip <laughs> off his fingers, but uh, we'll see more of those two. Troy Brown, by the way, has been fighting the flu bug and missed some practice this week. 
second and ten. Underneath the coverage, there he is. Brown bobbles it for a moment, but holds on to the 46 of Youngstown State. Powers on the coverage. There's Darnell Clark, who's been injured. Let's get the story. Jim Gray. All right, Jim. Darnell Clark twisted his ankle. They've been icing it. Now they're taking the tape off and his shoe off. His uh, return is very questionable. They're concerned that he could have some sprained ligaments. They're going to try and tape it back up and have him walk the sidelines. But right now, his return is very much in question. Jim. He's their explosive big play runner. That means that Tamron Smith may have to go the whole way. That tailback or the rest of the way I should say third down and four. Peyton deflected twice. Off the tip fingertips of Jeff Powers and Andre Mason. Throwing for Will Brown. Well, he was determined to throw this. Uh, this is a real fastball here. Uh, he does, puts a lot on it. It gets okay. tipped. Again, you can see Youngstown dropping as many people possible to take that middle range pass away from him. He's going to be well served if he can hold it just a little bit, dump it to somebody short, and look for the shorter game. First time in the game, it's been three downs and out for Marshall. So Travis Colquitt is in to punt for the second time today. Oh, he really got this one. He hit it too good. Right into the middle of the end zone, bring it to the 20. Midway through the second quarter, a touchdown for Marshall University. The difference right now. Well, after this game, we'll be going back to Greg and Terry Bradshaw for the NFL today. You'll hear from a familiar 49ers quarterback who was activated just yesterday, Joe Montana. That's next on the NFL today, the last word before kickoff. Then the Niners in Tampa Bay this afternoon on CBS. John, what about uh, Joe Montana being activated? Good what move. about what about Joe, George Seifert having Joe Montana as your backup quarterback? That's living pretty good. Oh, I think it's very important for the 49ers. If something happens to Steve Young, they've gone in with, you know, the greatest quarterback of all time. Ryan Wood with the run for about five yards. If something ever did happen to Steve Young, would you go past Steve Bono and bring in Joe Montana? I, I, I think so. You know, he's his experience in the playoff, the lift he would give to that football team. I'm sure he's rusty. And if Joe Montana rusty is a quarterback that everybody in the world would like to have. Uh, yes, I think it's a big thing for the 49ers psychologically as well as physically. Montana could, in fact, see action today but the 49ers first must win to clinch the home field throughout the playoffs on second and five Tamron Smith for only about a yard William King chalk up another tackle for him this is getting back to the Youngstown style of play uh, they've run the ball aggressively twice they come up third and a long two but that's pretty good for them uh, I think they're effective throwing the football uh, in this uh, down and distance They've been early in this game, third and 10, third and 12, which is not right for them. Third down and three. Terrica Jones is in a tailback. They run the option. Cochran flips it to Jones. He wasn't ready for it. Recovered by Marshall. Shannon Morrison with the recovery. <laughs> Terrica Jones, the third team tailback, tried to take the pitch. I'm not sure he was ready for it, John. Here we're going to see the option. Look how far off the ball Cochran is. He's way in the backfield, and it becomes easy to defend it. And they were that play was going nowhere and uh, uh, but uh, but for but to disaster and that's what happened. Jim Tressel told us we can't give them any easy ones. They can score with a big play in a hurry. They've just given them a great opportunity as Glenn Pedro runs to the 25 a three yard run. There's Morrison who made the recovery. Well that's a, that's the typical traffic of winning teams when you are when you get that positive turnover advantage uh, pretty hard for anybody to be beaten and uh, 
that stat is true in high school, college, pro football, and uh, right now it favors Marshall. They've got a turnover and a chance to go in and get more points. Second and seven. Three receivers in the game. They still run it with Pedro. Open room. And about a yard shy of the first, he needs to get to the 18. Pete Woods and Chris Deaton were blocking up the middle. Here we get a look at the draw play now. Look at the defensive lineman start up the field. Look at that hole and look how well that offensive line of Marshall is reacting to things. They're coming up third down and short. This might have been an opportunity for Big Johnny McGee to in, in a tailback, but they're not going to use him here. Third and one. Payton. Oh, that'll be close. They mark it inside of the 18. I think he has it. Bumped out by Chris Vecchione. First down. Michael Payton shows us his strength as well as his athletic ability. He really doesn't have a lot going. He just runs right through that tackle. That's the second or third tackle he's broken. Lowers that shoulder like a running back and gets a first down for his team. They have controlled the football, the thundering herd, in this first half. We have 4.51 before halftime. 7-0. Thundering herd looking for more. Catch it on first down. Inside of the 10, it'll set up a goal to go situation. Hatchet is a very quick runner. He gets into the line right now and is through that hole uh, in impressive fashion. Boy, they are sure controlling the line of scrimmage. Look at them come off the football. There's just excellent blocking, and the Youngstown defensive players are not coming off those blocks, and that's where the that's where the offensive dominance comes in the offensive line when a lineman can get into his guy and keep him uh, keep the man blocked. Marshall is doing that now. Second and two. I gave him the first down too early. And Peyton. Oh. Banging shoulders with powers. That will give him the goal to go situation from the five. Listen to this hit. The contact between Peyton and Powers. That's a tough quarterback. I think if I were coaching him, I'd like him to hit with his left shoulder rather than his right one. He seems to lower the boom and attack people with that passing arm. He is. He's an impressive young man. First and goal from the five. They fake, they throw to the end zone, and he had an open man, another cut. Well, I think he threw it away. Uh, you know, I think there were people standing in his line of vision towards his tight end, and uh, plus the, I think that guy's only caught a couple passes all year, so he just threw that away and said, hey, we will, uh, we'll get him second down. I can see why this man was the most uh, valuable player in this level of, uh, uh, of college football. We've been talking all week about old Johnny McKay be, being back at fullback. Uh, he's not in that position yet. Not so far. Second and goal. Hatchet. This is a situation. Oh, they give him the touchdown. I thought he was short by about a half yard. Orlando Hatchet. Well, we may have talked about him being mature for looking mature for his uh, age, but uh, he certainly has not lost any quickness. He is uh, a very quick back and a very aggressive, and he slammed that baby home. Billy Merrick. Good again. 14 nothing. Let's check out Hatchet with the second effort to get the touchdown. Look at his acceleration now. They run a draw play, the play they've been running. It's a nice call. Watch him accelerate at that goal line right there. Look at that body. Body lead. Finish the run. Keep going. Stretches the ball. He was fortunate there. He fell onto a defensive player. So he didn't really get 
down on the ground. He was down, but he was on top of a player. Put the ball in the end zone. Touchdown. Here we get a look at why this play is successful. Look at Radliff here, the right guard. He's an All-American. Step down and get a block on the nose man and then come on the linebacker. Both linebackers hesitate a little bit and give them the opportunity to run. See Ratliff start in, push the nose man, come off, get the linebacker Evans who had hesitated, and look how uh, Hatchet finishes that run. Outstanding play. Ratliff and Hatchet both had big efforts on that one. Fourteen to nothing. Three thirty remaining in the first half. You know it's interesting. Last night the Marshall team just killing time was taken to a local theater to see a movie to try to get pumped up for this championship game. Did they see Rambo Rocky under siege. No. How about Home Alone 2. Well there's a lot of violence in Home Alone 2. Yeah, there, there is a little bit. But Home Alone 2. They must have said every time Joe Pesci came on that screen and say that those are the bad guys. Those are the Youngstown State guys. Ball's going to they have a choice here but I think they're going to take the ball out at the 35. It's the kick sailed out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 35 so that's a break for Youngstown State. Youngstown State has not not gotten off to the kind of start offensively obviously that they would like. Uh, they have got to put together a drive when you when you're a running team and you're not doing the things you want to do there's some frustration and we can already see it in some of the play selection and some of the the execution of their offense. Jim has got to get his football team going again now I'm not worried about this not worrying about the score but just say hey let's put first downs together and let's get our rhythm and we can catch these guys as the game goes on. But establishing some side type of offensive consistency here is very important. Three receivers for the Penguins. Cameron Smith. A tough five yards inside. Brian Litton and William King made the tackle and let's go down to Jim Gray. All right Jim Darnell Clark will not return. He tried to walk it off. They retaped his ankle. It's just too severe of a sprain. They're telling us he's going to leave at halftime on crutches. He will not return today. Jim. So his roommate Tamron Smith. Will spend most of the time in the backfield although it's Terrica Jones right now lining up behind Cochran on second and five. Looking for Boykin. And the catch is made near the first. Here we get a look at just a quick a quick throw out to Boykin who's covered. Covered by Brown by Troy Brown. Brown he earns a scholarship there. I wonder if you, do you get two scholarships if you play both offense and defense. I, I don't know but. You know he's in a, he's really an enjoyable kid to talk to. He loves to play, and they certainly give him a chance to do a lot of things. They marked it. They marked it just inches shy of the first. And on third down, let's see where they put this one. I think he got it with the second effort, but he didn't yep. get it by much. Last year, it was a three-nothing Marshall lead at halftime, and that. Opened up to 17 to 6 after three quarters as Peyton started to get hot. But in the final quarter, Youngstown threw away the running game, brought out the passing attack, threw for 150 yards in the final quarter, and scored 19 unanswered to win the championship. They're trailing 14 nothing here in the second quarter. On first down here, they fire it. Don Swizzler into Marshall. Well those are the kind of passes uh, Cochran I think can be effective with uh, the quick throw we saw just before that and the quick bootleg where he gets a chance to move a little bit and get the ball off and uh, that's the kind of uh, passing game that they can mix in uh, a consistent running game that they can get back in this ball game. They were 
looking for Boykin on the sideline that time and uh, found him uh, just behind the corner against the two deep zone, but he came down out of bounds, so it's an incomplete pass. So it'll be third and three. Five five is well. what he's listed. Slot formation to the top. Oh no. Marshall's defense comes up big again. Jim Durning stuffing Tamron Smith. Well, they came with the blitz that time. They put the middle linebacker up on the line to give him a, a basically a seven man line. Look at they've got all the center and the guard covered. King comes in there and stunts and uh, I think destroys the blocking pattern. Dunning makes the play. Gets to turn to the crowd and said, hey, I did it. And he did do it. They have to punt. Wilkins in again with 40 seconds before halftime. Kick it over the head of Brown. He just lets it sail toward the 10 and inside of the 10. So just prior to the half, 28 seconds to go. I don't expect Marshall will get fancy at this point. But at halftime, Greg Gumble with the latest sports news and a feature that you really will want to stick around to watch. Story of the Marshall football team, 1970. Team that was lost in a plane crash, November the 14th of 1970. It's one reason why this community is so into this game. They talk about it as being a release, not to forget about their heroes, the 75 who perished, but a chance for them to pay tribute to them in a way with a victory here in Huntington today. Certainly it has been fun for us to be a part of this. Uh, this weekend we've been here a couple of days and these people are so enthusiastic about their team. And, uh, this team is really plays an important part in the in the community and are much loved. Jim Tressel's team will have to fight back from 14 down. Michael Payton and the Thundering Herd are halfway home with the score. Marshall 14 Youngstown State nothing. Halftime activities will continue after this message and a word from your local station. The 1992 NCAA Division I AA Football Championship is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America Chevrolet and your local Chevy dealer. Gillette and the revolutionary Gillette Sensor Shaving System. Gillette, the best a man can get. And by John Hancock Financial Services. Real life, real answers. Greg Gumbel in New York. That'll do it for now. Join Terry and me on the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern time. Right now, let's send you back to Jim Nance and John Robinson in Huntington, West Virginia. Gentlemen. Thank you, Greg. 14 to nothing, a touchdown pass from Peyton to Bartram and a touchdown run by Orlando Hatchett. And Marshall leads in this championship game, and all the numbers favor them as well, Coach Robinson. Absolutely. Youngstown would like to forget this half, say, hey, let's go back out and start again. Uh, Marshall's doing things the way they want to do and say, hey, we just got to keep going with it. Seems like the Marshall offense has been on the field the great majority of the time. In fact, the numbers, again, do support that. <laughs> Passing yards, first downs, total yards. Look at the number of plays that have been run. Yeah, and three first downs, that's, that's what's really frustrating, I'm sure, for Youngstown. They really haven't established a plan yet, and at halftime, it's crucial for them to come out and say this is how we can win this game. Well the second half is about to get underway and we'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. Jim Donnan and Marshall University 30 minutes of football away from a national championship. Let's find out what Jim Tressel was thinking at halftime. Here's Jim Gray. Jim, what did you tell your team at halftime? There's been total domination on both sides of the ball by Marshall. Well, the thing we haven't done yet, Jim, is set the tempo of the game with our offense. We haven't moved like we'd like to move and like we're customary doing. Plus, you can't turn the ball over to a great offense like Marshall's. What we got to do is just go out and play like we know how. You know, it's easy to play when you're, when you're hanging in there and you're on top, and that's the way life is. But when you're really tested, we'll find out about ourselves this afternoon. Okay, Jim, thank you. Good thank luck you. in the second yeah. half. 
Jim. Well let's not forget they came back from 11 down last year in the fourth quarter to Marshall. Look at last year's score by quarters in the title game that took place at Georgia Southern. Youngstown State with 19 unanswered in the fourth to win it. And Marshall played in the championship game in 87 out in Pocatello, Idaho against Northeast Louisiana and lost a 14 point lead in the second half. 43 42. Everett on the run back. Smashed before he gets to the 20. And a flag on the field. Chris Parker on the hit. Does that play on their mind at all, John, the fact that they've been in two championship games and lost two big leads? Well, uh, if nobody brings it up in the locker room, I don't think it does. But I think, you know, if you're it, it probably plays on the mind of coaches more than anything. Uh, coaches begin to call the game a little differently, begin to tighten up a little bit. I think Jim has got to make sure he keeps his his group aggressive on this, you know, and from an offensive standpoint. <clears throat> Here we've got a penalty on the defense. This is an unusual penalty. But what this is is the cover man going down the field. We'll hear the official tell us if he can turn a switch on. There he goes. Illegal block, kicking team, blocking below the waist, breaking up the wedge. First down. You don't see that one very often. You really don't. And that's the that's the guy going down on a kick. Somebody's coming to block him, and he attacks the wedge or attacks the blocker below the waist uh, where. The blocker really can't defend himself either, so it's a good rule, and we don't see it very often, but we saw it there. Cochran only 20 yards passing in the first half. They'll have to open that up here in the last two quarters. They'll start from the 35. Cameron Smith. It's a good run to begin the third quarter. Give him six. Chris Samarone, the center, and Ryan Wood, the fullback, help clear up the middle. Darnell Clark, the other tailback. The other thousand yard rusher will not return a sprained ankle in the first half. Tamron Smith really has to take over this game uh, with runs like that the four five and six yard game on a consistent basis to get them first downs and, and a score. Second down and four. Smith. No gain this time. William King. May have been hurt on the tackle. Well I think he hit his head right against those big thighs but. He has been an impressive player. He is, uh, for Marshall's sake, I, you know, he has to get up and continue to play because he is their big tackler. He plays the weak side linebacker, which is often the, one, the linebacker that's hardest to get blocked. But I think he went down hard on that one. We'll see King come into the, into the screen. The pitch is back to Smith. Boom, there comes uh, Twisted his King, head. and he's got, he got a hit right in the side of the head, and that's a... See him coming through, head starts down and takes the blow on the side of it in the jaw and the neck area. And I'm sure he's stunned. Boy, he hit the ground. He looked like he was out going down. Very good football player. Uh, the defensive coaches all felt like he was their most aggressive and, and best defensive player. So William King getting some help on the field. We'll take a timeout. Silence has fallen on Marshall University Stadium as William King remains down on the field after getting his head twisted and turned while making a tackle. It's being lifted now onto a stretcher. There's another look at the hit. We see him come into the screen. Right here, he takes a blow right on the side in the jaw area. And he obviously uh, was knocked out almost immediately. It's kind of a difficult thing to watch. You can see the blow. It looked like it was lower down in the chin and neck area. Doctors and uh, trainers are all very well trained and, and are very uh, conservative in their treatment in terms of this kind of an injury. This doesn't necessarily mean that he has a severe injury, but anytime you have a trauma to the head or, or neck like that, uh, utmost precaution is 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 taken. Uh, I think we all 
hope very much that as as Jim Donan is there, you can just see his the concern on his face. As a coach, as we saw Jim Donnan after walking out on the field and looking very upset and emotional about this, what have you been through a situation like that? I know last year you were on the other side of the field during the Mike Utley game. Yeah, yes, not, to, and not to imply that we have the same set situation. No, here. but it, but you do know when a, when a player is seriously hurt, and you do know, and all of a sudden. Uh, um, you know the same thing we're feeling right here. It goes through everybody's uh, mind, and uh, it, it's uh, it's a point. It's a thing you just you dread, and you you live and uh, hope that you can uh, avoid ever being in, involved in it. Mike Utley from the Detroit Lions was injured in our game last year and uh, was paralyzed, and. Uh, uh, it, Jim Gray has uh, an angle on it from the sidelines. Jim, what do you know? Jim, Jim Don and the head coach who was just out on the field walked over and told us that King has some numbness in his neck and they're being very careful in how they handle him. He does have some movement in both his legs and his upper body. That's the good news, but there's quite a bit of numbness in his neck. They're going to take him right now over to Cabell Huntington Hospital where he'll be examined. Jim. Thank you, Jim. I would say that, that is some good news in that report. Absolutely. And you can see here how the, the, the treatment, uh, they immobilize the neck area. You see his, his uh, helmet remains on. Uh, they tape him there uh, so the head does not move. And they will x-ray him that way, I, I, I believe, when they get into the hospital. One of our players was hurt on, on the practice field in my time with the Rams. and. Uh, we stopped practice and several of us went with the player to the hospital and uh, so I've seen that set of circumstances. as William King heads to the hospital. Our thoughts are with him. Third and four situation. Herb Williams tackled short of the first by George Thomas and for Williams who caught 67 passes this year for over 1200 yards. That's his first catch. He has been very silent uh, in He's their big play guy. He's a big receiver, and they like to get him deep up, uh, up against smaller corners. Uh, you know, you really have to give credit to the Marshall defense. They've been rea reacting very well, tackling very well, and stopping the runner in his tracks uh, many, many times in this half. Wilkins punts away to Troy Brown. Sidesteps the first couple of defenders, but only gets to the 22. 36-yard punt. No return, no yardage on the return. Jeffrey Johnston made the tackle on the special teams for Youngstown. Well, the first series of the third quarter is always important for the team coming out as well as the team behind. They want to be in a place where they continue the momentum, continue to be aggressive. Another timeout on the field. Marshall will have the football for the first time in the second half with a 14 to nothing lead. Well, the excitement of this championship game has uh, really been suppressed and taken away for the moment. Let's get a report again on William King. Here's Jim Gray. Okay, Jim, I'm with team doctor for Marshall, Dr. Clyde Hegg, and he has just examined William King. What can you tell us? He's hurt his neck, but so far there's no sign of any paralysis or anything. We're just taking extra caution, sending him to the hospital, check x-rays and so forth. How so far he's doing fine. How serious is that neck injury? If there's no fracture, it's not very serious. If there is a fracture, of course, that could be serious. He does have movement in his foot, his thighs, and his hands? Everything's working fine so far, yes. Thank you, Dr. Hick. Jim? All right, Jim, that's excellent news. Definitely. Uh, that's the best news of the day. And, uh, 
you know, it puts things in perspective. Uh, the people playing this game are far more important than the game itself. Always true. Sometimes we forget that. Marshall takes over from its 22 yard line. Pedro near the 30. The Marshall runners have been able to get up the field consistently in this ball game. The Marshall offensive line has stayed with their blocks throughout this game. And that, to me, is one of the things that surprised me a little bit. Youngstown offensive line was kind of thought of, thought of as being the more powerful. But today, uh, the edge has to go to Marshall in that area. Second down and two. Hatchet with a quick burst for the first down. Bill Ratliff, the All-America guard, made another nice block. Jim, aren't you impressed with this young man, the way he takes that ball up in there? And uh, shades of uh, Craig with the 49ers. Remember how, how yes. aggressive he was up attacking up there? And uh, uh, this young man has been very impressive. Yeah, he's had lanes, but boy, he, he gets up in them fast. Once he gets past the line, he just glides. Hatchet goes out. Pedro is the single back on first and ten. Will Brown into Youngstown State Territory. Everett on the coverage. Boy, this kid's got an arm. You know, that's a long throw. This ball is going to travel about 35 yards in the air. Pedro makes a nice block on, on, on Powers out there. Boom, watch that ball travel that distance. It's about a 35 yard fastball there and right on the it was a strike right on the money. Baton a touchdown pass in the first half to Mike Bartram. New set of downs for the Penguins 48. Throwing it across his body and Bartram should have had that one. I think he surprised Bartram with that a little bit. Uh, he did throw across his body and uh, and again put the ball on the money. Bartram just looked like he uh, didn't expect it and it got kind of back on his inside shoulder. It's a rollout changing the protection a little bit. He's crowded Bartram's there and it's just in behind him a little more behind him than we thought and uh, you know a tough catch. But again an inside receiver has to be able to control his body to make that catch. Uh, speed isn't as an important quality for a man catching the ball inside as balance. Giants surprising Kansas City 21 to 7 at halftime. Second and 10. Quick pass to Ricky Carter. He's a freshman and a walk on from Lynchburg, Virginia. He replaced Will Brown in the lineup for three games when Brown went out in November with a separated shoulder. And caught 23 passes in three games, including a couple of touchdowns. So well, he's, he's the future. Yeah, and he's earned himself a scholarship now, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, Marshall is uh, doing everything they want to do. They're mixing up their offense, they're throwing to a variety of receivers. Uh, it's been a very positive uh, offensive show for them throughout the game. Hatchet has the first down. Inside of the 30, Roberts gives chase and pushes him out of bounds. Ricky Carter threw a big block for Orlando Hatchet. As a 26 yard run. Here we're going to look at a low angle and watch him start to the left, cut back to the right, has a big lane. Again, the offensive line dominating the uh, play, and he's off to the run, Dave. Ron Roberts, the uh, so here here we go now. Watch watch how the offensive line comes off and gets uh, uh, the Youngstown defense moving in that direction. And watch the cutback lane. Look at the movement going there. Here's the good cutback by the runner, and he's off, and he's got a chance for a touchdown. Roberts, the safety, comes over and makes a tackle. Pedro for four, down to the 11. Pedro, catch it now with seven rushes for 73 yards and a touchdown. Well, he's been the key so far, and again, uh, the offensive line really is what is doing it for Marshall, as we've said. Hatchet took the third play of the year, 68 yards for a touchdown to kind of set the pace for the thundering herd, bringing them back to the championship game. They lead 14 to nothing. 
10 50 to go in the third quarter. Second and six. Peyton to Brown. And he's down at the one. Will Brown. Troy Brown. Troy Brown. I thought he might get in. Tackled just shy of the goal line. Here again, we're going to watch Brown delay. Bartram runs deep, takes the linebackers with him. He catches it in front of it, and then just gets right past the linebacker Lee for what looked like it could have been a touchdown and slipped down on the one. We maybe get a chance to see Johnny McGee here at the no. Boy, we we've been we've been pushing for that, and we're not, it doesn't look like we're going to see it. We still have some time, maybe. <laughs> First and goal. Pedro. He's over the top for a touchdown. Well, the, the way McGee is blocking in the line and the way those backs are running, I keep it just as as they are doing it. They are really taking control of this football game. on the snap Andy Bowen holds it Willie Merrick kicks it through 21 to nothing here we get a look at the tailback just going over the top the line gets a momentum forward and he lurches over everybody into the end zone here we get a look and see what Dave what Roberts the defensive safety sees the play coming right at him see the movement of the line and then get up in the air two hands on the football Touchdown. Well, over 31,300 on hand, the largest crowd of championship game history. The largest crowd Youngstown State has ever played before. Sold out all the seats and almost 5,000 here. Standing room. Only tickets sold. Michael Payton and the Thundering Herd engineering a 21 to nothing lead with 10 13 remaining in the third quarter. Everett let it go and they say it went out at the one so bring it out to the 35. By the way, Marshall's largest crowd it's ever played before was this year at Missouri. They played Division 1A Missouri, lost 44-21 on the road before 40,000. Oh, look at the today total, 84 yards, almost 300 behind the season average. Well, down 21 zip, more and more pressure is going on the quarterback, Cochran, and uh, you know, a year ago they were in the same position, not quite this uh, far down, but started throwing the football and uh, went on to win. If they've been saving anything good, they better start now. Uh, they're down and they need the lift of uh, being able to, to make first downs. Play action. Cochran, he's had no time to throw today, and again he is sacked. Jim Durning gets credit for the sack. They've been putting pressure on him throughout the afternoon. Quarterback goes back now and he fakes the draw. But when you're down 21 nothing, the secondary is willing to drop. People just get a little deeper, a little quicker. Pass rush is a little better. Harder to find people open and he's sacked. Loss of four, second down and 14. to Swizzler Don Swizzler with his second catch with Thomas on the coverage about two yards shy of the first a 12 yard gain that time Swizzler came crossing underneath the coverage uh, Marshall dropped in a zone deep uh, covered two receivers going up the field Swizzler got underneath him and hurt his fingers too and that it looks like on defense for Marshall replacing William King is Avoris Holman a freshman from Orlando. 
Third and two. And Cochran is sacked for the second time on this series. Brian Litton got him. This is a young man who got very emotional and misty eyed when talking to us yesterday about putting the uniform on for the last time. He's a senior. Initially, you see Litton there. They're, they're doubling him, and he just kind of runs right through everybody. That's an impressive sack. That's a kind of one of those dominant kind that uh, Reggie White or somebody like that would have. A uh, very happy young man and uh, a very impressive young man, as Jim said. Brown. Troy Brown nowhere to run and tackled at the 28. 35 yard punt a loss of two on the return there's a guy who started out as a 200 pound quarterback when he arrived here now a 260 pound defensive lineman and a realist that's one thing you find at yes. this level these kids they know that they're not going to likely be playing at the next level. Right. He talked about, uh, you know, maybe having a chance, but uh, he had other plans for his life and was very, uh, very uh, reflective about this might be the last time he puts on a uniform. And uh, he was impressive. The flag on the field as Bartram goes out of bounds at the 39. You can really sense the the rhythm that Marshall has offensively. They have they have had a great variety in their play selection. They had backfield in motion that time. Greg Briner is their offensive coordinator who spent three or four years with the Colts uh, as a quarterback coach there and uh, has brought a lot of those I offensive ideas to this football team and, and he's really got to go illegal procedure offense only six men on the line still first down there's Greg Brighter standing there uh, the look of a confident man he's saying hey <laughs> I got a lot of weapons and I'm using them and, and uh, look at the shirt he wore for you John uh oh <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> He was he a, that would get your attention. He was a, a quarterback at USC a couple of years before I got there and uh, has had an outstanding coaching career and has done really a great job. As you can see, this offense is imaginative. Look at that. That's what you call balance right there. First and 15. They fumble it, but recovered by Hatchet. Looked like they were a step off on the exchange. Hatchet was getting excited. He, was, he, he knew there's a hole up there. He wanted to get through it as fast as he can. Don't don't you get the feeling, Jim, that this guy really is is very calm. You know, people talk to us about his last year's performance where he got too excited, but he's been every bit the calm uh, leader, uh, just great physical player, and, and uh, just uh, everything you would want in a quarterback. Second and 17. He's from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. What a year for Harrisburg. With Dennis Green, the Vikings coach, that's his hometown, and Ricky Waters of the Niners. And he completes the pass on a bullet to Will Brown. One of the things when you play against zone defenses, quarterbacks have to be accurate and they have to throw the ball in the seams. You'll see here, watch him go back, sees his target. That ball is right in the seam between some defenders. Right? You know, it's a pretty big seam. He was wide open, but he throws the ball low uh, for a man in the zone. It's just a just a perfect pass. Four catches for Will Brown. Peyton, as I mentioned, from Harrisburg, he played competitively in high school against Ricky Waters. Now the pass is intercepted. Here's the break. Everett has it for Youngstown State. That's the kind of break that they're looking for. On third and three, the pass deflected by Jeff Powers, picked off by Malcolm Everett. We're going to get a blitz this time. He, he has to get rid of the ball fast. Powers is coming. You see him coming up the field. He's blocked, but there's the ball is tipped. Just enough to get Everett a chance to step in front and make a play. Chris Becchione actually deflected it. Powers was putting pressure on the quarterback. That's the first interception thrown by Peyton in 97 attempts. Cochran comes out firing across the middle short of his target. 
looking for Herb Williams. Yep. Herb was going out for the traditional, I'll go out for a long one and throw it to me, but they double covered him and Cochran wasn't looking at anybody else and uh, I think was fortunate he threw the ball low because it could have just as well been picked off there. Herb Williams as Pate suffers that first interception at 97 attempts. Herb Williams talking of hometowns is from Boardman, Ohio, went to the same high school as Bernie Kosar and Dave Trevecki and he he recently met Bernie Kozar. Bernie said, one piece of advice for a receiver, always come back to, to the, the football. Yep. And you can, you can believe that that's a quarterback saying that, because if they come back to the ball, if you throw it a little ball, if they come back and get it. Quarterbacks and coaches say, come back to the ball. Receivers say, hey, hit me deep. I got a touchdown. For Youngstown State, this is the deepest penetration of the afternoon They're to the Marshall 40. Second down and 10. That pass was in on one hop to Tamron Smith. You can see uh, Rick Cochran now is just trying to trying to be confident but you can see that he's worried things just aren't going the way that they would like them to go their third down and ten and, and you know Jim don't you get the feeling that they've got to make something happen here or this game is going to slip away from them? on this series absolutely third down not very successful today third and ten with 620 remaining third quarter 21 nothing Marshall. He got the pass away to save the sack. But it'll be fourth and ten. Byron Turner and Rodney Garrett the flying heat. I think we may. I don't know if Cochran got back up. Is somebody still down over there? He's limping a little bit away from the field. Yep. He's limping and I saw bouncing up was Mark Brungard. A redshirt freshman backup quarterback. Well, he just hasn't had time to do much. And there's Brungard. He'll come in. They're going to go for it on fourth and ten. He threw this year 27 passes, was 13 of 27 for 149 yards and no touchdowns. But Cochran says, hey, wait a minute. Don't take me out. I'm ready to go. You said he's a tough one. Yeah, I. You know he's a competitor, and if he's got something, he's got to come up with it today. Here comes a blitz on him. He needs it now. Fourth and ten. He's picked up. George Thomas racing for the thundering herd. Thomas inside of the 30 and down to the 22-yard line. interception of the year for Thomas a 52 yard return tackled by Ryan Wood who saved the touchdown he had protection this time uh, Marshall is blitzing uh, Tamron Smith goes in and picks up the linebacker but there was really some confusion the wide receiver started to run a run a corner pattern Cochran threw the football but he threw it to the wrong guys he stays alive and forces the runner back inside and they get him but they're in dire straits now Second turnover. The first one was a fumble that set up the game's second touchdown. And 5.59 remaining in the third quarter. Marshall looking for more. From the 22 of Youngstown. Hatchet on the screen. Hatchet to the 10. Hatchet to the 5. Hatchet is he in? Yes, touchdown. They give it to him. His second of the day.
Screen pass, perfectly set up, perfectly executed. Hatchet took that ball to the goal line like he, he was. There was no stopping him, and there was no stopping him. Merrick makes it 28 to nothing. We're going to see great blocking. You see Bartram just go out of your screen, watch Bartram come across, watch the linemen start out on the screen pass and turn up the field. Bartram gets a good block. They stay on their blocks. Look how they stay on the blocks. This man Hatchet's going for the goal line. No, I don't think he quite got in there, but boy, close enough. Michael Payton has thrown another touchdown. Only one play after the turnover, Marshall by 28. Orlando Hatchet has scored two touchdowns today, one rushing, one receiving, and it's 28 to nothing, Marshall, in the national championship game for Division I AA. Following this game, the NFL today is next. Greg Gumbel, Terry Bradshaw in New York. And they'll have the story of Joe Montana, who was just activated yesterday by the 49ers and will be dressed and ready to play today for the 49ers against Tampa Bay. That's at 4 Eastern this afternoon. 49ers with a win will clinch home field throughout the playoffs. If the game gets out of hand, you could possibly see Montana in his first action in two years. Well, it's great just to see his picture back on the promos, isn't it? I, that's a guy, you know, we competed against him twice a year for the last uh, 10 years, but I there's no player I respect more or, or like better than Joe Montana. I, I was going to say, I thought maybe you'd seen enough of him. I have, but I still, <laughs> uh, you know, love to see him, to love hate things. Everett, Malcolm Everett with a great return. Malcolm Everett. Working a narrow gap along the sideline takes it all the way to the Marshall side of the field at the 47. Well, I didn't see any room and he, he was able to find it though. Well, he started up into the pack. Good kickoff returners attack. You see him attack there. Now he finds that little lane outside. Makes it hits the crease. Nice run. Very nice run. This is probably the quickest uh, and most aggressive attacking that uh, you saw him step out of bounds back away there and the officials uh, always catch that. They did indeed catch it so take it back to the 43 of the Penguins a 40 yard run back. Tamron Smith. That'll take it to the herd side of the field only their fourth first down of the day and let's get another report. From Jim Gray. Jim? Well, Jim, a lot of people wonder what the big difference is between Division I and Division I-2A. Well, it's really just a numbers game in scholarships. 92 to 67 is the difference. But look at the difference on the scoreboard this year. Citadel, a Division I-2A team, twice beat major colleges. In fact, Jack Crow was fired after he lost in the first game to Citadel. You also see Youngstown State. They beat Iowa 28 to 20. So next time that you think that that's an inferior conference that's playing, you really ought to think again. Jim? There were some big victories this year, beating the big boys. And Jim Trestle and Youngstown State had one over Ohio University. Well, Jim is just looking for something that he can do to spark his football team right now. They don't have any kind of rhythm. Putting two or three good plays together has been very hard for them. Second and five, Cameron Smith. Ryan Wood had the previous carry during that report. Smith picks up two. Stevenson on the tackle. It's so difficult for a team once they get out of their comfort zone. Here they're trying to snap the ball. They're trying to go without a no huddle, and this clearly is not the strength of the Youngstown team, but they find themselves in a place where they've got to try to do something to get this thing changed. Third and four. Like Cochran. Oh, could have been caught that time. It's a little bit of a reach for Trent Boykin. 
But he could have had it for a first, so they'll have to go for it again. How telling those looks are. You can see Jim Trestle down there saying, man, anybody got an idea, you know? They're looking for help in the press box. You can see the frustration on his face. And the struggle is just trying to find something. It, you know, the, uh, he's an excellent coach and an excellent competitor, but they're struggling to find anything they can do offensively. They threw, move the ball. Yep, they threw an interception, John, on the last fourth down attempt. Now it's fourth and four. Swizzler has it for the first down. So they'll move the chains, and that's their deepest penetration, the 30-yard line of Marshall. Here's a blitz coming. Cochran changes it. Do you see the blitz coming off the outside corner? Just backs up two steps, throws the ball accurately. First down. Herb Williams across the middle to the 10. Herb Williams slashing to the end zone. Touchdown, Youngstown State. Well, again, that got him started. It's the short pass from Cochran, the, trying to find it before he has to let his protection defend too long. Uh, he's got the ball off, and now they got a chance to at least feel good on him <laughs> temporarily. Might not be a bad place for an onside kick or some surprise in that element to try to try to get the momentum going a little bit. When you're behind in the other guy's stadium, you need something to quiet that crowd and to and to get your people feeling good. Uh, it might not be a bad place for an onside kick if they have a their if they could be effective with it. Steve Six will snap it to Bucciarelli. Wilkins, who was 49 for 50 this year, makes this one 28 to 7. Herb Williams told us he loved it across the middle. And he has scored for the ninth time this year. Here's just a quick three-strap drop. Herb goes up and gets it. The safety man, Johnson, overruns him. Got outside of him. He just turned up and put it in the end zone. He's a big physical guy. He's been quiet most of this game. Here we did a look at a three-step drop. Of, again, the blitz is on. He just kind of threw a kind of a knuckleball at him, but he went up and got it found the lane and turned it up the field. He is a big physical kid. Did a nice job of putting that one in the end zone and then given the you know hey, well you need three more before you can celebrate yeah. here. But, but you, we got to start anyway. Think it's over, think it's over. This thing isn't over. You can hear the calls from the Youngstown side of the field. This man Herb Williams you saw him a moment ago. He caught a 33 yard touchdown to start that fourth quarter comeback last year where Youngstown State scored 19 unanswered. But here it's 28 to 7 341 to go in the third. Short into the breeze and running it back is Troy Brown to the 30. Brown Derek Pixley on the hit. This young man, uh, you know, as we say, certainly. Uh, does a day's work. He got wrapped a little bit in the back, but he got up and went back to the huddle. So far today, we've seen him return a kickoff, return a punt, catch a big pass or two, play defense. Michael Payton says he's the most exciting player in Division I AA football. Payton rolls to his side of the field and now will keep it for seven. Chased down by Vecchio. This kid's doing everything right today. You know, he's making decisions on the run, when to throw, when to run. Here again, he's on, on the rollout. This is an extended opportunity for quarterbacks to try to read the field. One of the hard things is, is to continue to run and see down the field. He makes a last minute decision, a good decision, seven yard gain. So it's second and three. Hatchet. 
There's a slashing run to the 47. Good for the first. Well, they hatchet and Peyton looked like they would like to play two today if they could. You know, they just got that look in their eye, and they are being well supported by that offensive line. Every time a back goes into that line, there are lanes. Back finds him, he can get through, and they are sustaining their blocks. First and ten. Two thirty remaining in the third. Twenty eight to seven lead for Marshall. Pump fake and Peyton will go to the right side. He has Carter. Ricky Carter. They've got two Ricky Carters at Marshall. And how do you separate them? Well, on the jersey, on the back of that jersey, it's Ricky with a Y. So Ricky on defense has to go I E. Jim, is uh, Michael Payton hot or is Michael Payton hot? He's looking for a quick pass over to the left. There's nobody there. He kind of fools around a little bit, lets the receiver get down the field, and finds a guy on the other side of the field. First and 10 from the 32 of Youngstown State. Hatchet was stopped up the middle, takes it outside, and takes a pretty good blow at the 29 yard line from Jeff Powers. Hatchet could be moving in on 100 yards today. And he's coming close to Glenn Pedro, his backfield mate, who started the day with 65 more yards rushing. 10 carries, 81 yards for Hatchet. And I'm sure he's saying, why did you take me out? I'm hot. Second and eight. Open is Brown, and he dropped it. Well, as you said, Jim Brown had missed a couple of days of practice during the week. He's had a real bad head cold and uh, probably, uh, you know, timing a little bit off. He is the uh, has 111 all purpose yards uh, today. Uh, his average, I think, is uh, about at the top of uh, Division One 2 A uh, in all purpose yards. Third down and eight. He has it down to the 14. 16 yards on the scramble. Well, it was a quarterback draw, and, he, and they just, it's the same draw play that they've run to Hatchet. Uh, Hatchet went over to the sideline, so uh, Peyton said, Hey, uh, I'll take it. I'll show you that I could do that too. And he is getting excited. And he got an illegal procedure call. Uh, that'll wipe that one out. Again, Jim Donnan knowing a few things about good quarterbacking. He was a starter at North Carolina State for three years. Illegal formation. Offense. Illegal formation is probably uh, uh, two of the wide receivers were not up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, one, one man uh, has to be on the line of scrimmage, and they probably were both just off the line a little bit. Not a bad time for that screen pass again. That was a touchdown uh, a few plays ago. Third and 13. Oh, that was a terrific throw by Peyton. And Ricky Carter couldn't handle it. Jim, I can't believe this guy. I mean, he has put the ball on the money in, in, a, in a wide variety of passes. He's thrown short effectively. This is down the field, across the field a little bit. He's over on the far side, just slightly. That's the fourth Marshall drop of the day, so they'll have to punt. Had a couple of drops on that possession. Colquitt comes in. He punted only 27 times this year because the team scored 76 times. Can you believe that? 63 touchdowns, 13 field goals, but luck out. Colquitt. Colquitt trying to get it away. Now he just pitches it to a teammate. Marcus Evans falls on it for Youngstown State. Couldn't handle it. Well, that's the crack in the door for Youngstown. Uh, the kicking game can be so decisive in games. 
He, the ball's off center. He has to adjust to catch it. He doesn't catch catch it. Now the worst thing you can do. He was probably a year old when Garo Yarpremian threw that <laughs> ball away, but I don't think he remembers that. But it's one of those things you cannot do. It. Here's a mini break for Marshall Colquitt. You saw him pitching it forward. They rule it as an incompletion, so the football will be turned over to the Penguins back at the line of scrimmage. So instead of taking over near midfield, it'll be Young State, Youngstown State's ball at their own 35. Jim, do you think he was smarter than you and I here? I figured that one out. Now that was either I have no idea what I'm doing or I'm pretty smart. Now if he did throw it, I, I well of course the ball didn't go over the line of scrimmage. Like I was going to say they needed a, a, to call an NLF receiver downfield, but the ball didn't travel over the line. So very fortuitous for them. 56 seconds to go in the third quarter. Flooding the right side with three receivers. They throw that way. Oh, that was a tough pass to complete. But it got to Troy Trent Boykin right between a couple of defenders, including McGregor. 19 yards on this one. I didn't see how that one would ever no, go. No, that one looked like it went, went right through his helmet almost. <laughs> Here we see Cochran back just putting some there. There's a guy I say I got this one. Nope. That's the old tip drill there and uh, Boykin did a nice job of catching the football. Boykin down the left sideline again led too much and out of bounds. You know, uh, Youngstown really has a, a lot of time in this game. If they can just drive the football and not, you know, not get in a panic, you know, feeling right here, uh, I think they, you know, they can get this 28-14 with one more quarter to play. So we're uh, got yourself a ball all, game at that point. Away from over, yeah. That's what you call the beginnings of a comeback there. An open man is Smith, wide open, inside of the 30, down to the 20, to the 10 and out of bounds. Rule of inbounds at the four-yard line. Shannon Morrison finally made the tackle, but 42 yards. Can't believe the open area on that side of the field. Well, I think Smith was really just blocking him for him. He was trying to roll out and block everybody on that side. Now he's scrambling Smith saying hey there's nobody covering me. And again kind of a scramble play but now a chance to get back in this game with 24 seconds to go in the third quarter first and goal from the four Tamron Smith scores easily touchdown Youngstown State. Craig Cortez. Do a great block up the middle. The only senior starter on the offensive line. And the Penguins are back into this ball game. Took them only 40 seconds on that possession to score. points 28 to 14 Marshall Tamron Smith is just going to come right at us and put this ball in the end zone Marshall was blitzing and they blitz right out of the hole and he just walks into the end zone very powerful built low belt to the ground runner reminds me of Ricky Irvin's from the uh, Washington Redskins and formerly of USC that short powerful attacking runner and you can see the look in their eyes it's different now the worried look is gone they have a sense that hey we can do something with the football what Marshall has to do is not take over that worried look you don't want those worries to come across the field if you're Marshall and come on your side you just want to keep playing and uh, they have, uh, had a wonderful game offensively they've got to just keep moving the football from their standpoint. Injury update from the Marshall side of the field. George Thomas on that interception run back strained his Achilles tendon. 
and is not going to return to this game. Achilles tendon injuries are kind of uh, progressive injuries. You hurt it a little bit, and then you're very much in danger of tearing it. So it's a wise decision to keep him out of the rest of this game. Well, we'll see Troy Brown a little bit more now on both sides of the field. Receiver and in the secondary and as a returner as he comes back from the five. Oh, look at this. Finally tackled by Mason. And they got the flag down on that one. It's like a face mask. Hard earned run back. Yeah, he ran a long way to get uh, back there, but now with the face mask, gives him a little better edge. Here we see the finish of the run, and there's the hand that goes into the face mask. Really uh, wasn't there for long. It wasn't there for long. <laughs> I think you get a half a second, don't you, Jim, on, uh, on that thing before you have to let go? Not really. Uh, again, the official sees the hand go in there, and that's the call that's made. And he does get his hand through and into his face. It certainly wasn't a flagrant call, so it's a five yard penalty. How about the intensity of these kids? That's Mason well, who committed the five yard penalty is all. So hang in there, Andre. Yeah. This game's a long way from being over, Andre. But you do you do get a sense, Jim, and we've had a sense all week of how important this football game is to everybody involved, to Youngstown, uh, players, coaches, the people of, uh, of Youngstown, and of course to the people here in, in this area. This game means everything to them. Five seconds to go, third quarter. Hatchet. The crowd waiting for him after a one yard gain. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score Marshall 28, Youngstown State 14. Our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Well, welcome back to Huntington. I'm Jim Gray. Marshall leads 28 to 14 as we begin the fourth quarter. Well, there is some very good news here at the stadium. The Marshall Benz has just been informed that William King, the linebacker who left, has just gone undergone some neurological tests. All of those tests look positive. The prognosis is positive. They're going to keep him in the hospital and run some more tests. But as of now, that's very, very good news. There's still some caution. He's not totally out of the woods, but the preliminary tests are all positive. Jim. Thank you, Jim. And uh, outstanding news to open the fourth quarter. Marshall has it, has the 14 point lead, and second and nine from their 24. Hayden is sacked. Alfred Hill, the third. In on the sack. Second time today that they got to him. Powers also. Again, you're going to see a very, it's about a three man pass rush. They're defending with as many people as they can. There's just no place to go with the football. Peyton got a little confused. If he'd have gone straight up the field, he might have got himself five or six yards. Now, third down and 15. Deep in their own territory. Brown has it but not nearly enough for the first so they'll kick away to Youngstown State and I hate to harp on it but Marshall has been to the championship game twice in the last five years in 87 they had a 42 28 lead in the final quarter only to lose to Stan Humphreys and Northeast Louisiana 43 42 and then a year ago an 11 point lead starting the opening quarter only to lose to this Youngstown State team 25 to 17. Dave Roberts one of the returners has brought back two this year the touchdown. Oh what a pressure 
kick. Polkwood got it away. Here's Roberts on the run back. He's got the outside. And he returns it to the Marshall 49. 20 yard return. Well, whatever it was that, that made uh, Youngstown seem so hesitant uh, seems to be all gone now. Here's it's a low line drive kick. He, Roberts picks it up in the first hop and he starts to get outside the wall. There's really only one man to beat. And Johnson gets him and pushes him out of bounds. But they've got the ball at midfield and they've got momentum. The 1992 NCAA Division I AA Football Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. New improved head and shoulders. Now it works even better to prevent flakes. And by the Discover card. It pays to discover. A rally being put forth by the Penguins of Youngstown State. 14 unanswered. As Coach Jim Tressel told us, our kids are motivated by playing before a hostile crowd. They have the playoff experience. It helped them to road victories at the Citadel. And last week at Northern Iowa, where they stopped the Panthers' 25-game home winning streak. They have the confidence of having come back a year ago against the same team. And now on first and ten, Cochran with great protection. Going for Williams, and he has it inside of the 20 and down at the 15. Well, that was roll one way and throw all the way back to Williams uh, going the opposite direction, and he and he did what he can do. He can jump up and rebound the ball. Cochran rolls out. Williams, you saw, go out of your camera range and angle all the way back to across the field. Watch him get up in the air, shield the defensive back out right there. He's got the football there, down there again. 34 yards to Herb Williams. Woo! Cameron Smith. Takes two or three hits and gets it to the 10. <laughs> Second straight year that Youngstown has had a pair of thousand yard rushers. This man last year ran for over 1,500 yards and set the playoff record of 246 yards in one game. But he's going most of the way today alone because of the ankle sprain in the first half to Darnell Clark. Smith has scored a touchdown. It's second and five. He gets the carry, looking for another one, and he's down at the one. Donahue Stevenson on the tackle at the one. For this football team to have a physical runner be able to start to make yards in the fourth quarter is very, very important. This is a very powerful runner, very short, stocky. Look at that shoulder level down. Look where they're tackling them up around the shoulders, and you, runners always finish runs well when you when they get a low center of gravity like that. He certainly is doing that, and they're right down there knocking on the door, and he's going to have the football again. Youngstown State's Drew Gerber from Worcester, Ohio gets help off the field. Gerber's been both a tackle and a guard for them. He played most of the game today at guard. Looks like an ankle. That just hurts. First and goal at the one. Smith, he's in. Touchdown, Youngstown State. a key young man in there as this game plays itself out in the fourth quarter. Youngstown has got the physical back in their game. They've had a couple of big plays to get them back close. Now with uh, a ball control and a power runner, uh, they can put together a drive to tighten this, to tie this game up. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm, I'm back. I'm here. It's too easy. Too easy. Too easy. We got him back. Back. We got him back. Back. 
It's too easy now, but it wasn't in the first half. <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't get a lot of that from him. But it's it shows you the emotions and what football is like. It can it can be so good and then turn to be so bad and, and the and the reverse. To move within seven. Wilkins. No problem. 28 21. And our cameraman went down there. I think. <laughs> Here's the run for the touchdown. There's the lane. He just dives right through them. Here we get a look at it. Look at the center. Look at the low center of gravity. A lot of runners now and are, are these kind of people, five foot seven, powerfully built people that are very hard to tackle. They are stunned in Huntington. The lead at one time was 28. It's now a seven point lead. The championship game by quarters. 14 to nothing at halftime. What this doesn't tell you is the lead was 28 to nothing. As Youngstown State scored the last 14 of the third quarter, now a touchdown added here in the fourth. With 12.04 remaining. Three touchdown drives in two minutes, five seconds, 40 seconds, and a minute 19. And Brown will just down it, bring Marshall out to the 20-yard line. Well, this is where Marshall, I think, offensively has to see it as an even game and say, we got to pull out all the stops and go down and, and score. Uh, they've been they've been just very dynamic offensively. When the momentum starts to turn the other way, it's when you start thinking of uh, of draw plays instead of passes and not taking chances. And Michael Payton has been the player of the year, and now he's got to be continue to be that in the fourth quarter for Marshall. They've had only two first downs in their last four possessions. Hatchet with an open lane. And six yards for Hatchet. These two teams in the NCAA coaches poll preseason were ranked one and two. Marshall was one. The Penguins were two. They remain that way the first five weeks of the season. They went into the playoffs seated sixth and seventh. Marshall was six. Youngstown was seven. And they have second and four. Hatchet again. Hatchet with the first down. And a 10 yard run for Orlando Hatchet. Bartram threw a good block. Give him 11. Two draw plays in a row, and Hatchet does a nice job. There's nothing much for him up inside. Like a good runner, he takes off and then turns it up the field. What I really like about this young man is he is going to go up the field, and he is going to go up the field with every ounce of speed and aggressiveness that he can muster. He sits out this play with 99 yards rushing, one touchdown rushing, one receiving. First down with 11.18 to go. Quarterback draw, and it did not fool to Mario Ridgeway. Well, that's three draw type plays in a row. Watch how the defensive line just doesn't get up the field now. They're kind of playing into people, and there's just, you can see, there's no place to run the draw when you don't get penetration up the field. They're going to have to put the football in the air. They can't be concerned about it. They have to be willing to attack, or this game's going to slip away from them. Second and 12. Hayden to Bartram. Bartram, he is stuck by Pixley. Otherwise, he was on his way to picking up another first down. It'll be third and two. Through that in front of the zone, uh, Youngstown is backing uh, seven or eight defenders back seven, eight to ten yards. So that's where they're going to have to continue to throw the football. Throwing it down into that coverage is going to be more and more difficult. If they continue to throw, here's a third down and two. That's uh, that's big. 
the clock has moved to just under 10 minutes. This is third and two, but you still get a sense that they're thinking past. That defense trying to answer. Peyton gets away for a minute, and he's bounced out, I believe, about a yard shy. They mark it at the 46. Evans was giving chase. It's the it's the rollout again. Look how look how laterally Youngstown is playing. They're not trying to penetrate up the field, and as they roll, they've got everybody covered. No place for Peyton to go. I think they've got to be able to throw short and run straight at him because this defense has really backed off and is playing a very containing type of defense, and at least for now, is working very well for them. So they'll have to punt fourth and one. He was a little more than a yard short, and a yard and a half. Now remember, Colquitt mishandled one snap, and the last punt was delivered under heavy pressure. Oh, this one never got 10 feet off the ground to Roberts. Roberts breaks some tackles, and he's to the 30-yard line. Casey Hill on the coverage. Who would have ever thought that Youngstown State would have possession of the football in this game with a chance to go down and tie it? Or for that matter, if they do drive it, they could even consider the two-point <laughs> alternative. But there's yep. overtime at this division level. We'll be right back with the exciting finish. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York with a reminder that coming up next on the NFL today, we'll hear from Joe Montana and we'll take a closer look at the play that turned around Sunday's Dallas-Washington game and the unlikely Redskin heroes. Right now, back to the game. Welcome back to Huntington. Marshall leads 28-21. to This is another great comeback by Youngstown. And Youngstown State definitely wants to be able to join all of those others who have repeated. This is the year of the repeat. Duke, the Chicago Bulls, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Jim Tressel is very aware of that. He told his team before the game, I'd like to be the fourth in that equation. Jim Nance? And they would be only the second in Division I AA history to repeat. Georgia Southern did it a couple of times. And uh, back in the game, in the huddle, in fact, for Youngstown State, number four, Darnell Clark. They had sent word from the Youngstown bench in the first half that he was finished for the day. He'd sprained his ankle severely enough where he would not be back. They took the tape off and everything, but he's bouncing around and he wants to help them. They fake it to Clark. Cochran, a little too steep for Boykin. Remember, Boykin's only 5'5. Five, five. You can't throw it too high for that guy. You've got to get it down a little bit. But he did get up in the air and almost make the catch. Youngstown has opened this game up and they are staying with that kind of an attack now. That worried look that was on uh, Cochran's face now is given away to concentration. A little more relaxed. 925 remaining in the game. Seven point lead for Marshall. Cameron Smith. To the 35, a gain of six. That I think is going to be big for Youngstown as this game uh, winds down. The, the steady run inside, the, the power and the weight of the offensive line as Youngstown is starting to be felt now. And those games that were getting one and two now are getting five and six. Third and five. For a first down at the 48 yard line. Well, that was a great job by Cochran. He was way off balance throwing this football. He's forced to the sideline. As we get a look at it from the end zone, watch Cochran now. He's running where this is an extremely difficult throw. Boy, that's hard. He puts it right on the money. Williams makes a nice catch. Keeps his feet inbounds. Yeah, very nice ballet act. And first down, the throw again. Tough play. Williams caught it, but he was out of bounds. 
Williams by the way four catches 80 yards and a touchdown the 80 yards gives him the Youngstown single season record for most yards in a season by a receiver breaking Jim Ferrani's mark He's approaching 1300 yards on the year. Well this young man was no factor early in the football game but now he's everything to them. Cochran is looking for him and willing to throw him the football even if he's covered because of his physical size and uh, that's going to be an issue with this, this in the remainder of this game just getting the ball up to him and letting him go up and rebound it. impressive receiver played only one year of high school football out of Bernie Kosar's high school second down pass play to Swizzler and he's down at the 43 that time they blitzed and he got the ball off quickly and got it to him. You saw a little smile on his face. Life has changed. There, there's his dad who's been a former coach. And uh, you got the number 10 there on it on his sweater. Joe Cochran in the entourage. 18 members of the family here at all. There he is. That's the dad, the old coach. And he's got that look of an old coach there, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's a, pretty serious about this thing. He's a principal now in a high school. What a tough looking principal. Smith on third and two, and he's about a yard short. Well, it's a fourth down and a, a little bit of a, of a clutch call for Jim Trestle now. A lot of time left in this game, a chance to put him deep in the hole, and uh, Jim's trying to make up his mind now which way he wants to go. He's going for it. He is definitely going. Momentum is such a, such a factor in this game. I'm sure he just doesn't want to lose it now. You can't blame him, can you, John? No, no way. And, you know, look at him. He knows what he wants to do. This is it's not one of those indecisive things. He said, hey, they can't stop us here. What a play. Fourth and one. Smith. Oh, boy, that's going to be where it's marked. Casey Hill hit him first. This Smith made a second effort. This is where the officials have such an important part of this game where he marks the football might be different. That's that looks short to me doesn't it. Too? Yeah it does to me too. Well that's the life of a coach you make that kind of call and if it doesn't go right you wind up. Uh, you wind up getting second guess, but uh, he made a very positive decision in his mind. He knew what he wanted. Marshall's defense has held. a great job he, he's hit for a two yard loss and he almost spins over and gets the first down I think for Marshall here's a look at it the penetration that's football boy when you're pushing and shoving for inches 656 remaining in this game both teams have all three timeouts remaining as Pedro gets the handoff and takes it to the 47. I think Marshall's got to try to go down and get points on the board to try to slow down and run that clock down right now. I'm not sure is, a, is what they want to do. This has been a dynamic offense and when they are in a flow and going they they move the football and, and are hard to handle. If they kind of uh, sit on it a little bit here the things uh, that's not their best stuff. Second down at six. Out of the backfield, Pedro, and that'll stop the clock short of the first. Alfred, Alfred Hill, the third, with a jarring hit to take him out. We are we are seeing the intensity increase. I thought this was an intense environment when we started, and it is getting uh, uh, more dramatic by the moment. There are two or three tackles in the last series have been very strong, and that was a great hit. We're fighting for three yards now, third down and three. Again, every play now gets big, but this is a very big one for us.
Third and three. Payton passes deflected at the line by David Birch. And they only burned 50 seconds on the clock on that series because of one rushing play, one pass that went, was completed and was knocked out of bounds, and then an incompletion. Well, I, I think, you know, you, you get to a point like this as a coach, you say, gee, we want the clock to go down. But what Marshall, the Marshall strength is moving that football and being dynamic right now. They're not holding up on defense. And I think they have to, uh, they have to think aggressively on offense. But it would have been nice for them to get a little time off that clock. That's three straight times now. Three downs and out for Marshall. Colquitt oh, nice. into the wind. He boots it. And out of bounds, a good one. He angled it. Let's see, where did they put it? How about the 11-yard line? Colquitt does his job. Five fifty-six to go. All three timeouts remaining for each team. We'll come back with the Penguins possession in a moment. Welcome back to Huntington. Marshall leads 28-21 here in the fourth quarter. We have an update from Cabell Huntington Hospital. The doctors tell us that William King was knocked out. He has no fracture or no dislocation in his neck. The x-rays have come back. They're all negative. He's feeling much better. In fact, we're told right now that William is listening to and watching the game. So from all of us, William, feel better. Jim? That's for sure. William King, we are all so pleased and relieved to hear that you are just fine. The last four possessions for Youngstown State, and they've done it in a hurry. Those three drives for touchdowns, the longest drive lasted two minutes. One was 40 seconds. And the last possession, they got it into Marshall territory, turned it over on downs. Cameron Smith wide open on that right side to the 20. You know, talking about William King, he missed a couple of games with an ankle sprain during the season, and Marshall lost both of those games. And when he was on the field, Marshall had shut out Youngstown State today to tell you how valuable he is to that defense. And I think as you said Jimmy had about seven tackles in, in the first half and uh, uh, William uh, we were very impressed with your play. You made a heck of a tackle on the one you probably don't remember it but uh, it was a good tackle and a hard tackle. Second down and two. Cochran gets rid of it almost paid for it too. Almost intercepted by Byron Turner, freshman from Aberdeen, Maryland. Keenan Rhodes was putting pressure on the quarterback. Watch the pressure. Rhodes last week, they said, had seven quarterback pressures. Here's one. Watch number 87. He's just pressure right up there. That's Jim Linton there that comes in and makes the hit, gets him right. There's a knockdown and almost an interception. So let's give Byron Litton the credit for the pressure. The third and two. And the Penguins from the 19 go with Wood, and he has the first down. Move the chains with five minutes remaining. How about that for a call? Uh, Wood hasn't touched the ball at all in December, I don't think. And uh, third and two and a crucial down they give him, and he makes a, makes a nice run in the first down. Good Ryan, call. Ryan Wood. This year, the fullback, mainly just a blocker for Clark and Smith, carried the football 56 times without a touchdown. The last time he scored was the touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown against Marshall in the championship game in 91. He picks up a big first down on that carry. And now Cochran's pass complete for another first. That's Boykin with the reception. Here's the rhythm that we talked about it was missing. Watch Cochran go back, just set his feet quickly, throw the football, boom, on the money, curl pattern. That's the thing that Marshall and Peyton were doing so well early, early in the game, and Youngstown just couldn't seem to find anywhere in their arsenal. Now those things are starting to look easy. And look at the look on the kid's face. He's just he's got that confident look. Say, man, I'm in, I'm having fun now. A 
completion to John Quintana is tight end near the 50 that's only the third catch this year for the tight end who's a 4.0 student at Youngstown State. What you know Jim it's uh, momentum is such an amazing thing isn't it all of a sudden now they can't do anything wrong they've they've got that feeling guys who haven't caught passes all season long are coming now up making with plays. Diving catches and you can see the look we're getting great pictures uh, uh, on the sidelines and the emotion caught in the game. First down as we move under four minutes. Swizzler out of bounds at the 39. And I think it's time we start talking about the overtime rule in Division One AA football. So you can really dispel any thoughts of if Youngstown State drives it in, of them going for two. Now, you know, you got to go for one. They have a good kicker. That's an advantage for them. Uh, they tie the ball game, it goes to overtime. They go to midfield, flip a coin, uh, and then each team takes shots from the 25 yard line. Basically, puts the ball in play from the 25. Here comes the blitz. He gets away from it. Cochran completes it to Herb Williams. A blocker in front to the 20. Herb Williams is down yeah, at the 14. Yeah, yeah. Boykin threw him a block in 24 yards for Herb Williams. You see the blitz coming up the middle. It forces Cochran wide. You can see 48 come right through there. The tailback uh, go Clark goes back and picks him up. Now he's on the run. Puts the ball on the money to Herb Williams who gets up the field. He put it in the end zone last earlier in the th in the third quarter. Now he's got him down just outside the 10. From the 14 trailing by seven. They had been 28 down. <laughs> Cameron Smith for four. Roger Johnson on the hit. Marshall led by 11 last year entering the final quarter only to lose and 87 in the championship. They led by 14 in the final quarter only to lose today. They've led by 28. But now Youngstown State's trying to go in for the tying score. Second and six. Cochran to the end zone. Oh, he had it. Boykin right in his hands. That's a pass that they had worked on all week. Boykin to the corner. And he had the step. He a very quick receiver. He had the step. Now we get down to third down and five. Uh, two very crucial calls. Here's a look at the end zone. He hesitates just a little bit. Boykin's there. Defensive back doesn't quite get it. That's the touchdown. The ball there. It's a catch that uh, if they don't score, he'll he'll remember for a long time. He's open. Nice throw. Boykin goes out. Swizzler in third, and let's call it six. With 2:35 remaining. Smith, first down and. Touchdown! Touchdown, Youngstown State! Can you believe that, Jim? I, and that, you know, and, and Tamron Smith is becoming a, a real force in this game, and we thought all along that he would be. He's got some more work to do. Yeah, he's uh, he told us it was too easy. Too easy. How about the call third and six to run it? That really caught him off guard. I, I think it did too. And again, an excellent call. Now for the tie to tie the game with 228 remaining. Wilkins. Wilkins kick and it's 28 all. Well, there's two. There's 228. Here's the draw play now. Again. He finds the lane, bursts through the tackles. Look how he breaks tackles, but with the shoulder level underneath the tackler, using his power, gets knocked into the end zone by his own guy. Here again, we look at it close. Now watch the shoulder level, how low he is, how he breaks tackles with people that are, are trying to tackle him and getting up above that shoulder level and taking on all his power and letting him be uh, just really an outstanding runner. 
the advantages of being short as a ball carrier. You said it. John Quintana helped push him across the tight end. Does John get two points or something? Yeah, four for uh, Smith and two for John. But he did knock him into the end zone. But we've got 228 left. Marshall has all their time out, so you know you start projecting about overtime. But I think Marshall can has plenty of time to come down here and get a chance to go ahead. This is what Division One AA football is yeah. all about. These kids are playing their hearts out. Many of them playing football for the last time, and they know it. They're playing it for the love of the game. And it's all tied at 28. And let's not forget, Marshall has a place kicker that has never in his career attempted a field goal. Brown from a yard deep. Troy Brown to the 19. Ryan Coleman with another tackle on the kick coverage. The overtime rule in Division I AA football, if we go to that, is so interesting. They'll have a coin toss. The winning team, of course, will have that choice whether to take the ball or defend. Most like to defend at first, and the ball is spotted at the 25-yard line. Both teams will have a chance to score with the football. And they keep repeating the process till someone wins. And Peyton, that's going to be ruled an incompletion. He was hammered when he released it by Alfred Hill the third. Well, Hill was blocked, and uh, Peyton just uh, held onto the ball a little too long, and he got it from behind. It was an incomplete pass. Second down and ten now. Hill's going to get up the field from the outside to his back. He's got. Finally, watch Hill just stay to get knocked down, stay alive, get a shot at the shoulder, deflects the ball. Alfred Hill made a big play in last year's comeback. And Peyton throws to Brown. Brown gets enough for the first down. 12 yards, stops the clock with 210. They have a lot of time and an opportunity now to just continue that kind of passing if they're patient if they look for receivers in front of this zone then they're going to have an opportunity to continue to move the ball from the 31 tied at 28 hatchet for about four. It is almost eerie how many common links Youngstown State can draw on from a year ago. They opened both years in the playoffs with wins against Villanova, then had to travel to the number one ranked team last year, Nevada, this year, the Citadel. Then in the semifinals, they won each of the last two years without their offense scoring a touchdown. Today, like a year ago, they were shut out in the first half. Last year, they faced a big deficit going into the final quarter. Same case today. And it's second and six for Marshall. Brown holds on, but he does not have the first. Well, it's the clock is starting to work against him, and there you see Michael Payton taking the timeout. They've got to be, they've got to, they can't think overtime here. They've got a chance to go down and end this football game. If they can, uh, if they can get this high-powered offense moving again, they have a chance to uh, not give us a, an opportunity to see what this overtime rule is like. But uh, my gosh. Uh, a more dramatic situation you couldn't just couldn't uh, you couldn't draw it in a, if you were writing a novel. I think you're as, as stunned as I am and as the really 27,000 fans and all for Marshall here today. I don't and, know when I've been entertained any more than I good. have been in this game and and you know the, the pictures of these young people though the one thing that you really you really get caught up in is the, the young people involved in this game. They're playing it. A lot of them, as you said, Jim, playing their last football game, playing for something very important to them, uh, and just so excited and so emotional about it. Uh, it's a treat for us to be here, and it's a treat to be involved in a game as, uh, as exciting as this one. Hey, we just have received a phone call from the hospital, and William King uh, has just left the hospital and is returning, trying to get back to the field for the end of this game to watch the end of this game. 
Well, that's just another one of a series of great stories involved in this uh, tremendous day. Third down and a yard to go with 125 on the clock. 28, 28. Sneak by Peyton. And I believe he has it. Now they've got, that's it. They've got to get up on the ball and just to get momentum back. They've got to get a sense of saying, hey, we're attacking offensively again. They've lost some of that, that sense of being on the attack. Even if they don't score, they've got to come out of this game with a feeling that they're back wheeling and dealing again. Block is running, 117 to go. First down for Marshall. Over to Hatchet. Hatchet makes a nice move to get into Youngstown territory. Stays in bounds, and the clock stops at 107 now as they'll spot the football before they reset it. First down from the shotgun, Peyton. Sideline overthrows Bartram. Well, it looks to me like there's gonna, they're going to have to think down the middle a little bit. Uh, an awful lot of people trying to take those sideline routes away. I'm sure Greg Briner sitting in the press box looked and said, hey, there's some, there's some stuff in the middle. Uh, look for either Bartram, the tight end down the middle, or one of the wide receivers coming down and in. Remember, there's a senior place kicker for Marshall who was given the job today, his brother suspended, he takes over, he's never attempted a field goal. In his last game, he could be the man to win it. As they go to Hatchet, and Hatchet, they say, is out of bounds at the 40. It'll be third down and four. 52 seconds left, uh, I think they have two timeouts. And there you see Willie Merrick, top goal scorer on the soccer team. His brother missed a practice this week, David Merrick, third place kicker, was 12 out of 18 this year. So missing the practice, Willie takes over. What an amazing story. Third down and four. And Pedro, where do they spot him? Yes, first down. Critical placement, first down at the 35. Again, a good decision by Peyton. Looks down the field, but he gets quickly to his tailback who has a chance to run, and he gets the football. Pedro gets it up the field just enough for a first down. Clock is stopped, 45 seconds, 46 seconds left, two timeouts left, plenty of room. It's, the question is, where do they have to go? Where do they have to go to get in this guy's range? It's a Will, Willie's range. <laughs> Uh, the left side move for Marshall. I'll say this about Willie Merrick is it seems like we're setting up for that <laughs> unbelievable Cinderella zipper, uh, situation. But during the pregame warm-ups, he looked pretty strong. His first kick was from about 20 yards, a point after in, in the pregame warm-ups, and it made it almost to the goalpost. But thereafter, <laughs> thereafter, he was booming them from a good 45 wow. yards and making them. Ball start. Green. Still first down. Plus they're going into the wind, John. Do you think he's saying, how did I get in this kind of a deal? Uh, 45 well, it's, seconds. 45 it's, seconds. It's really Michael. First and 15. Brown, nifty move to get away. And then out of bounds, which was also a smart play to the 33. Again, they're taking it in little pieces. They're down to 39 seconds. So if that ball is still inbounds or they don't get it out of bounds, they're going to have to use a timeout quickly to make sure they have enough time. But it's starting to get down there. One, one throw, one throw down the middle somewhere, and a timeout gets them a chance for the field goal. And the coaches, you know, the coaches tell them, the kid doesn't hear a word the coach says. He said, well, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> Second down and eight. 11th play of the series, and Peyton puts him in field goal range as Troy Brown makes the catch and goes out of bounds at the 19. Again, an accurate throw by Peyton. Sets back, look at the pass blocking in the line. He's got room, he's got a lane to throw in. Great cut 
by Trout. Looks away, comes back, sets, fires, and boy, has he fired a lot of strikes. We showed you Nick Cochran's family. There's a whole entourage from Harrisburg. Peyton's fine family here, too. You can almost hear him now as their son has driven them into range to win it. And here's Peyton on the draw. They'll have to use a timeout as he is tackled at the 13. Excellent call. Excellent call. They got a timeout to use. Now they are down to 24 seconds. Probably the next, the biggest thing right now is to get that ball located in the middle somewhere so that uh, the young man who's going to make his first field goal attempt has a chance to look straight at the goalpost. That's a difficult kick from where he is. Well, we've got uh, another game coming your way today. I hope it's as, as exciting as this <laughs> one. It'll be tough to match, but first, the NFL today, they're waiting in New York. Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw are guys there, and they'll be joining you shortly with the latest on the Joe Montana situation. He was activated yesterday. We'll be dressed for the game that starts at 4 Eastern. Tampa Bay and the 49ers. The Niners trying to clinch home field with a win today. They clinch home field throughout the playoffs. That's NFL action next. We're, we're with the situation. 24 seconds. One timeout left ball on the right hash mark with a field goal kicker who has never tried a field goal at this level of football. Uh, some very dramatic circumstances. A timeout this time called by Youngstown State. Mike Payton has certainly done everything and lived up to all the, the hype about him. He's the most valuable player at this level of intercollegiate football and he's done everything he's been asked to do. Walter Payton award winner for the outstanding player division one double A twice the Southern Conference offensive player of the year one of only four to ever do that including Choo Choo Justice. <laughs> look at look, look at the uh, calmness in his face and you know, that's one of the things that's the most rewarding thing for a coach to be down there with the player look in his eyes and, and know you know that that a guy you wouldn't trade positions for anything in the world you couldn't offer that guy anything to take him out of where he is right now. Well if uh, I'm sure they're considering putting the ball in the middle giving the ball to hatch it somewhere in the middle try to set it up get a little closer get the ball in the middle. Take, take the time out. There's the brother with him saying, don't worry about it. It's easy. The kid said, are you kidding me? <laughs> what a scene, though. David Merritt. Yeah, oh, that's great. In street clothes, his brother waits. 24 seconds to go. Second and four. They get it to the middle of the field. Hatchet. Hatchet breaks it to the five. And down at the five. Oh, I think they they have to kick it here. I don't think they can wait any longer. They've called their last time out. They did what we thought they'd do. They gave the ball to, to Hackett. And now he does just a really a great job. He get all day getting up the field. Look at the determination, the body lean, and the fight in that guy. Ah, oh, boy, he's, you know, if we were picking the most valuable player, I might just pick that guy, although Michael Payton has done such a great but the most valuable player might be just coming on the field is, right now. This is incredible. My <laughs> eyes are also drifting toward the far end zone as I look for William King. He has not arrived yet. Again, we heard that he was in transit from the hospital back to try to make it here for the end of this game. It'll come down to a field goal try for a senior who has never attempted one in his career. Remember at halftime, uh, Jim Gray interviewing Coach Tressel, and Coach Tressel made a really a, a significant comment. We're going to find out about ourselves in the second half. Well, they found out. Uh, their kids fought back. Tremendous uh, comeback to make this uh, really one of the most exciting games in the history of this, uh, of this series. And, uh, boy, I, I don't know what else you could ask for. This team and this game has been a rallying point for this town that has been through a lot of suffering. And now they can 
win their first national championship on their home field. But they'll have to sit through one more timeout. Youngstown State tries to ice an already nervous kicker. And he's made it back. There's William King. There's got to be a Hollywood scriptwriter somewhere around yeah, here right now. Absolutely. He should get the he should get the award. I, you know, if let you and I make him the player of the game, no matter what happens here. How's that? He's I, got my vote. Yeah, yeah. And he's uh, one of their best players and uh, great looking kid. I don't know. I must be getting old or sentimental or something. But these <laughs> kids have been so impressive to me. Uh, you know, their attitude, the look in their eye, the way they've the way they've conducted themselves here. It's uh, it's been a treat for us. I think Youngstown will ice them one more time, or will they? <laughs> they got one time out. I don't eight. know. I just said uh, I I wouldn't. I just said, hey, let's find out what's going to happen here. What do you think he's thinking, Jim? What do you think? What do you think, young Mr. Mer Merrick is thinking there? Just uh, hey, you know, guy's got to be doing something on a Saturday afternoon. I, I think he's thinking, I'm going to make it. Yeah. For the national championship, Willie Merrick in his first field goal try ever from 22 yards. Merrick, yeah! <laughs> Can you believe it? Give him a varsity letter and give him a championship ring. Willie Merrick, a senior from Worthington, Ohio. Hello, Cinderella. You've arrived again. Please remain in the seats. Please remain in the stands. After the Bowen game. on the hold. Merrick on the kick. I should have been doing this for four years. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> I knew I should have been the starting place kicker. Doesn't get any better than that. Does not get any better. Oh, boy. There is an injured player for Youngstown State still down at the line of scrimmage. And that's Brian White, the offensive lineman who was in on the kick coverage. There are 10 seconds on the clock. So 10 seconds before it's official. Merrick gets a one more chance to kick kick the ball. Jim. What a gutsy drive handled by Michael Payton. After the shock of seeing a 28 point lead dissipate to regroup and take him 76 yards and 14 plays. To kick a field goal with 10 seconds remaining. Yes sir. Uh, very impressive. Uh, you know, and, and it, it, what was more impressive is, as you pointed out, four or five series in a row, they did absolutely nothing. And they felt everything slipping away from them. It seemed like history was repeating itself. This man said, no way, baby. I got one more chance, and I'm going to do it. And he did it. Look at these. Look at the look in these people. This is one of the most important days of their lives. Some of these people never play football again. Boy, I... I've enjoyed this. Well, that says it all. These two coaches have been impressive also. They have conducted themselves brought highly disciplined uh, really outstanding teams here Merrick to kick off for the third. 10 seconds remaining driving kick by Merrick angle Everett has it and he gets out of bounds 
giving Bound the offense the a chance the for, the Penguins. for a play from the 28-yard line. Well, Her Herb Williams has got to have the ball thrown towards him. I don't know if they can throw it far enough for him to go down here and rebound it. But he's the big receiver that could go up and rebound the football, and that's what they've got to be thinking, or hope for a pass interference down there to get one more chance. Uh, but uh, that door is just about closed. On us. I'm waiting for the fans, the standing room only oh, yeah. fans. This, this to is going to be a scene. Flood the field. How about that? Uh, the winning coach uh, has to make a decision to let to sit down his field goal kicker and then has a script written that makes it come out with a guy that comes in. This is like a movie. Absolutely. Last chance for Youngstown. Intercepted by Troy Brown. The man they call Mr. Everything and everything they ever wanted. The national championship has arrived in Huntington. Let's go down to Jim Gray. <laughs> Coach, this is a tremendous moment for you. It was a gutsy call this morning hey. when you suspended the kicker. Tell us about Willie Merrick and that decision. Well, was, I just can't say enough about our team. And, hey, it's just, hey, it's a great win for our program. And hey, Youngstown, give them a lot of credit. They're going to be mobbed, and this scene's going to go on for some time. Let's go back upstairs to Jim Ness. Right. Well, the unbelievable celebration scene is underway. And here's the winning field goal. Willie Merrick, welcome to college football in your last game. I enjoyed it, Coach. Been great to be with you. So for John Robinson and Jim Gray, Jim Nance saying so long from Marshall Football Stadium, where the Marshall Thundering Herd is the national champion with a 31-28 victory. So long and Merry Christmas, everybody.